Even though I could have went like two miles to get my shot today, I drove an oh, extra yeah, like you're... ten just so I could keep my perfect Moderna record. Just get the, <laughs> the royal flush there. Yeah. Team Moderna. I was like, I've had four Moderna so far. I don't want to ruin it with a Pfizer now. <laughs> I think I'm all Pfizered up. Hmm. Yeah, I need a Pfizer again. Hmm. So now, now I'm a quintuple Moderna. Oh, wow. I think this was my fourth shot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think I have four already, but I need to get the new Omicron booster. Oh, okay. So. Just give me all, give me all of them. Put them up, put them all, put all the microchips in me. I'll take them. <laughs> get the give best 5G sweet. coverage. Yeah, ever. give me a good 5G. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know if you saw it. I, I, I made a, a story today uh, saying exactly that pretty much. <laughs> I made a story today basically going like, after I got my vaccines, my phone now says 10 bars of 5G. How's that? <laughs> and then I took some tweezers and I stuck them to my head. And I was like, and look, I'm magnetic. <laughs> Those are the Which best. is awesome. <laughs> And convenient. Oh, and you're magnetic. Handling hard <laughs> yes. Just don't touch any credit cards. Or cards. Floppy disks. I couldn't resist the urge. I'm like, it was all comedy until the end. And I had to be like, at the end, I was like, the truth is out there. And the truth is simply that vaccines save lives. The end. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you don't like it. Fuck it off. Uh, speaking of doctors. Oh, no. <laughs> Dr. Goose. Dr. Goose. Uh, Dr. Goose. Yeah, Dr. Goose. We have two doctors in the house, uh, <laughs> Paula and Victoria. Um, and we only have two two threats up right now. We have uh, the crumbs of figs pigs, which are probably oh, going to be a problem real uh, soon. No. Um, no. Not yes, right now. Off tonight and win. <laughs> the goose uh, is not really a threat as much as a friend. Well, yeah. this it, may be one of the rare ones not that the goes the other way. <laughs> Yeah, this is... Oh, like the, we spent so much, spent so much trying, trying to make all the threats friends. We never thought a friend could become a threat. Yeah. Oh, no. So the Ardily Crone is the other threat. Uh, complexity four. Why did the crone really curse Lewis, putting his body, putting him into the goose, um, which gets you the horrible goose custom move? Uh, and a complexity six. How can the curse be reversed or removed? And which lets you resolve the threat. Uh, the figs pigs one you have one clue you only need two complexity what did la hortensia fig lose that she's trying to recapture or remember uh, a goose uh, for a chance hopefully it's a goose pate maybe um, she's the early crow and we are in we are starting night phase oh no yeah um i think at, well we're all parents as, now so we should stay in yeah i think there's gonna be <laughs> Uh, even more parents happening. Um, uh, you also get a um, the uh, the invitation for uh, Theodora's dinner uh, is the next evening, so oh, okay. not this night phase. Um, but uh, you have you have one night and day before that happens. One way there, you're not oh, pretend this is not required, just requested. So um, we can blow it off. As well. If you blow it off, things will happen. Yeah. We can send a goose in our <laughs> <laughs> Dress up a no. goose like Francis. Hang on, great envoy, Sir Goosington. Tra transformed, you, I'm sorry. Do you really want Theodora to have her hands on Lewis, though? <laughs> oh, <laughs> it no. Seems like, it seems like that could cause a lot of trouble. <laughs> she could use him for evil. She stole the Queen Jewels. Oh. She still has that camera. Francis. Yeah, she does have the camera. And the queen is the dead all of a sudden. Send the goose to the, the different queen. <laughs> yeah, she she hates Victoria, not not Lizzie, who mm. also is worthy of whatever. Um, but uh, so um, do, 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 do. Paloma is bringing someone along on this evening's uh, venture, and oh, yeah. uh, it is uh, someone shows up at the door. And uh, you look, you kind of recognize them for a moment. Um, Harley said that he was done with you, but uh -huh. um, you like open the door and like kind of have to blink a little bit because it looks like Harley. Uh, then you realize it's about 
25 years younger and it's harley's son uh oh i, I was said not time yeah uh, henry Farley. Uh, henry white why is his and, name not uh, harley's son his uh <laughs> he like has a has a little cap in his hands and he's just like um uh dr miss dr safi uh my um uh, you know my father uh he said that you required some assistance and that i was to um do whatever you needed so uh what um i'm afraid i'm new at this uh what uh, what do you need uh, from me the, the this evening and he's still like uh, just outside the door oh uh, <laughs> and, and blood was like weirdly overconfident about it. like oh we just kind of search around try to solve <laughs> whatever threat whatever threats up we're probably yeah, probably not probably not up to much i go figure out what the cannibals are doing at the pie shop and Get anyway why don't, you, uh, why don't you watch um uh fuck, what did i name my child asriel <laughs> asriel yeah why don't you watch asriel? why don't you uh why don't you hang out with Azrael for a bit while we while we even get with one child? There's the think of the kid's Ooh. name, say the wrong thing several times. I'm like Lewis, <laughs> that's the goose. <laughs> uh, why don't you why don't you come in the library where where the kids are? And it's like it's Lewis and Azrael and um, is the vampire there? Maybe vampire is still at the <laughs> kindred banquet, I think, but oh. probably is waking up. Yeah, nap time is over. <laughs> It's um, just and Lewis Fra and Fra Asriel Francis, hanging out. Francis, did you use your um, unquenchable thirst to uh, get rid of oh. a, that uh, condition? I assume so. Yeah, yeah. I see the scar on yeah, the I see no condition there. and a scar. Oh, um, so before we jump into night phase. Oh, no. Um, I was going through our stuff, and I think I've made a couple of realizations. Oh, uh, no. Which are, which are not true yet because I haven't said them out loud. Um, <laughs> but uh, one of them has to do with the nature of your painting. And uh -huh. uh, I just wanted to make sure that uh, I can take a little bit of liberty with that before uh, making it concrete. Um, yeah, I mean, if you don't contradict the yeah. minimal things we've set up so far. Yeah, I think it'll be, give you a little bit of, give you a bit oh, of okay. juice. So it'll be <laughs> okay. a good time. Um, and it's, I'm, it's like it's I it's building on things that have recently happened. I'm just like <laughs> doing doing my murder oh, board. Sure. Like, oh, that means that. Oh no, that means that. Oh no, that's okay. All right. <laughs> the painting is now a goose. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, so I think that's all all the uh, administrative stuff before we go into the night phase. Um, what? Oh, each player says what their hunter will be doing during the upcoming night phase. What will each hunter be doing during the upcoming night phase? Hmm. Mm, so many choices. <laughs> Out of character, I feel like we're facing catastrophe if we don't do something about things, kings. <laughs> but we'd have to either risk screwing up solving that or get another clue. Hmm. What's the current clue we have on that one? Uh, a great amount of hay scattered around the place. Yeah. <laughs> but vision in the night might get us a clue on that. Oh, yeah. I don't know. And what can we do about the ardly crone? Well, I was going to try to do a ritual and talk to it to find out more. Ooh. Mm, okay. That was in the plans last time. But we should definitely try to get another figs clue as well and solve that puppy. Well, we can't solve it tonight. Well, we could solve it. We could resolve it. Oh, it is the, do we, can we only solve during the day phase, I guess? You can only solve during the night. Oh, okay. Oh, so well, we... I, I thought we had to have it. I have some reason I was thinking we had to like have it ready to be resolved before the night phase or something mm. i think there's a there's a certain amount of you know preparation that happens with resolving a thing so it's it's conceivable yeah. that you could answer a question and resolve it during the night but not we'll likely. see how it goes yeah but yeah because i mean like we have to first answer the question by 
doing that, but then after we've answered the question, then we actually have to find her and capture or destroy her, right? So yeah. it's like two steps. Yeah, so unlikely tonight, but yeah. the, the future is not written. Um, but tomorrow well, night we have a dinner plan. <laughs> Yeah. So we need to tr capture her at the dinner. Is what <laughs> yes. We need to lure her to the dinner. <laughs> that is not completely out of the question. Of course, I do have my beacon in the night ability, which could you know, that could put us face to face with something to do with one of the threats. It's true. Oh yeah, it could yes, the crone. Um, where was I going with that? I feel like Fran in character Francis has forgotten about big pigs <laughs> and is only concerned about figuring out what's going on with Lewis. Mm -hmm. Um, but I don't know if he knows like anything useful to do. Take the night, like, darling. I feel like he, <laughs> sorry? You could take the night train to Ardley. I was about to ask if there was a way to get to Ardley. <laughs> oh, yeah, absolutely. Or if that, or if that strain credibility. Yeah, I feel like that's his instinct is like, yeah. he's going to he's gonna hop on the train to Ardley and talk to old friends there to, and, and yeah. do what he does best, get the village gossip about what Lewis was up to and yeah. um, how he might have crossed paths with, um what was the crone's name um i don't think uh, you you got the crone's name oh okay um, but, i just feel bad calling for the crone yeah i I, I, th I think you you probably know from uh what you know of him uh, her name is nell Nell. okay yeah so yeah i think i think he's just going to he, his plan is it, it in the in what passes for the conscious forebrain of francis he's like I'm going to go talk to people out in that town I hang out in. It'll be crazy. Nice. <laughs> and he's dimly aware that it's part of figuring out this horrible curse. Excellent. Uh, what about Paloma? What are you up to tonight? Oh, I should read it myself. You're on mute. Oh, thank you. Um, I was just thinking as that was happening, and maybe Azrael and Paloma have been researching goose behavior to try to communicate with the goose. <laughs> um, probably in consultation with Sarah of like, okay, what kind of rituals might we be able to communicate with a goose with? And then like, mm -hmm. what do we know about goose behavior? Can we create a goose Ouija board? <laughs> um, hawk, hawk. Honk. <laughs> Two honks for. It says honk again. <laughs> um, H O N. God damn it. <laughs> um, I don't know beyond that. I was thinking about the La Hortensia stuff, though. I don't know what we know about her already. Yeah, you know, is that um, let me bring her up. Um, she is the mother. Um, she uh, is missing an arm. She, um, the clue associated with her is there is hay everywhere uh, in a place, I think that was in the alley. Oh yeah, thank you for. Yeah, when you were chasing Patrick, I think you came across an alley with a bunch of hay in it. That was. Okay, and we're looking for maybe some more clues. Be nice to have at least one more, so yeah, at I least we'd be rolling was... even if we did that. Well, since she's a mom and I'm a mom. Yeah, we're going to have all sorts of kids. That we would understand each other. Talk. Yeah, and the question that we're answering is, what did La Hortensia Fig lose that she's trying to recapture or remember? Well, obviously it's her there's... arm. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, she fed fed the arm to her children. Maybe there's a, um, <laughs> what's the Victorian version of a mommy blog? Or maybe it's like a grief. <laughs> maybe I know her through like some grief. Um, <clears throat> circles like, <laughs> a little like distributed weekly penny dreadful but uh, but instead it's the uh, you know the the perfect mommy <laughs> the mothering brunch yes. the mothering brunch mother brunch um yeah maybe it's um, like the ladies who lunch well ladies who lunch is like 
Is that Victoria? It's a little after Victoria. No, that's like nineties. Um, Sometimes there's there's always the um, let me look at locations for a moment. Um, there's always the hospital where um, uh, Titus is. Um, yeah. 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 Look, I'm missing an arm. Oh, there we go. Oh, yeah, maybe I'm. <laughs> maybe I know that she visits him, and I'm hoping to Ooh. catch her visiting. And uh, I want to relate to her as a mom, and I've got uh, baby baby Harley with me, so. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, Harley's... I'm going to ask. I will ask you some questions about that when the time comes. Oh, but no, no like Azriel, I don't know how to take, but Harley's oh, yeah. baby. Oh, baby Harley. Well, yeah. I guess I'll, I'll, I guess I'll Not have a baby. Harley's son. I'm Harley's 30. son will watch Azriel with <laughs> with me, so we'll all three. Oh, come. all right. Uh, and Sarah is going to be doing a ritual to try and talk to Lewis. Uh, well, there's one possibility, but if I kind of feel like if if Francis is going to go check that out. Mm. Well, we were all researching that. Maybe we're not done researching it. I kind of feel now, like maybe I. What's what's Vampire Boy's name? I can't remember. Uh, Emil, I think it was Emil, or Emil. <laughs> I kind of think uh, maybe Emil should come on the uh, the outing with us as well. I mean, Ooh. we could have a Vampire Boy on our side if we have to face our. our yeah, that would be oh, no. very useful. Yeah. I mean, Azrael will have someone to play with. Yeah. And I need, you know, he needs to become acquainted in the ways of, you know, not... Pretending to be a... a being, yeah. Not wantonly killing at random. And, yeah. And, and, you know, perhaps uh, this is like a... You know, when I, when I pick him up, I think I'd give him a spiel about, you know, kind of... Tell him a little more about Hargrave House and be like, would you like to come help us? You solve a mystery. I would love for you to be you know, an honorary Hargrave House member alongside me, my my boy. I could teach you, and you could, there's much good you could do with your unique powers in the future. Um, what is your plan for dealing with him? Because the trip is, you know, not. I'm probably the the timeline is going to be like. It's not like study at the library, then you're at Ardley. It's probably preparing during the day and making the trip during the afternoon, evening. Um, what is, what's your uh, plan for uh, keeping him out of the sun, I guess? Oh, I thought we were talking about investigating the figs thing while Francis was oh, investigating oh, yeah. Ardley. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm I'm sorry, I, I misunderstood. Yeah, um, yeah, much easier then. Yeah, and that'll be super cool. Uh, yeah, I think. Because isn't that what you were talking about, Paloma? Were you talking about? Yeah. I, mean, I might be making things up. So I was thinking, like me, Paloma, the 30-year-old child of, of, of Farley. The wee and baby. The, and then the, the, the baby with my head, and then my vampire child. <laughs> we're all going on an outing yeah. to solve figs, pigs. We're just missing the goose. <laughs> And our immortal friend, <laughs> our easily distractible, distractible, just a human. normal family. <laughs> yeah, that sounds like a good time. Um, all again. right, I think I've got enough to go on there. Uh, <laughs> so let us go officially to night phase. Night, night phase. Um, uh, great. Uh, Mother has field messing, resurrection is the vessel beacon of the dark. Great. Cool. Um, let us choose an unseen. Mm, I haven't been really good about marking all of these off. We did, did we did the mudlarking one already though, right? That should be marked yeah, off. So, yeah. There was something with mudlarking. Yeah, they um, caught over the stuff in the mud. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Oh, that one's really good. Let's do that one. Oh, no. um, we're going to do the Belfort murder. Uh, this is uh, J32 on the sheet. Uh, Ch- Charles and Nancy Belfort have been married for 10 years and they absolutely despise each other. The night is the night when one of them will finally snap. Oh, um, no. 
who would like to do the first paint the scene? I mean, I've got to hit on it if nobody else does. All right. Yeah, uh, no so fine. paint the scene. As we look around the Belfort's home, how do we know their love for one another died long ago? You can distinctly tell that it's divided into sections of, you know, like one is obviously adorned by all of his stuff. And there's like another study that's adorned by all her stuff. Mm. And like, there's not really any air, even in like the, the grand parlor, it very much mm. seems artificially like, well, it really seems like that half of the room is very much done up in one style while this half of the room is done up in another style, <laughs> but not like in a, in, not like in a, you know, not like in a way where they actually determined like this half is mine, this half is just like it organically there, happened yeah. over the years. So it's like, well, they probably don't even realize that it has mm. coalesced that way over the years. But an outsider would definitely notice, like, it sure seems like that half of the room is yours and that half of the room is hers. Mm. <laughs> nice. I love that. Um, cool. Let's let's start off with Francis. Uh, are, you, are, you, are you taking Lewis up to Arley with you, you said? Um, I was thinking I would leave Lewis. Um, although, yeah, I, I, I think, it, I think it, well, I mean, normally Francis would be like, no, I must protect my child, but I think it's, he thinks it's in good hands with his family at, at Harvard. Yeah. I mean, Lewis is with us on the outing. Oh, yeah, Probably. maybe he should stay with us, yeah. Because we wouldn't want to leave him at Hargrave all alone while we're. Well, we have. Har I'm just kind of making case. Harley's son be a babysitter tonight. I think. Yeah. Oh right, 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 right. Uh, awesome. Cool. So um, there, it's a, it's a, um, you know, you, you can take a uh, train out of town, uh, uh -huh. but it's still going to be several hours by by coach probably. That's what I was wondering. There. Uh, so you you get there in. Uh, you know, early-ish evening. He probably set out. Uh, mm -hmm. Probably set out after breakfast, okay. um, and then got out. Uh, got out there in time. Um, and uh, as you approach, it's a it's a small small-ish farming villages. There's uh, there's a couple uh, you know, one uh, of patches, big patches of. Uh, there's a lot of acreage of farmland around it. Uh, probably, I don't know a dozen or twenty uh, small buildings. And, um, you know, uh, the population is mostly, uh, you know, inside at this hour, uh, you know, from, uh, from being there that it's, you know, it's a, it's a small farming community. So the, the paint the scene question as you, as the coach approaches oh. um, for you is um, as you, as you enter uh, the village of Ardley, uh, what, what about it do you see that tells you that they are uh, kind of stuck in the past a little bit? Um, okay, this is kind of silly, but yeah, I will say that Ardley has a, a commons mm -hmm. uh, in the center of the village that has, because I was just looking up the enclosure acts where they took all of the commons and split them into private property um, is still going to be in living memory for these mm -hmm. folks. Um, there was one, there was a big one a hundred years before, but then a bunch of them between 1845 and 1882. So I'm going to say that um, one of the old ways is that there is common property, there is common land um, that a lot of the farmers there are still using for grazing. Um, and it, and at this point in history, it's like, okay, they're consciously pushing back against kind of what's happening economically in England right now. Cool. Though maybe Francis doesn't understand it on that level. It's like, <laughs> oh, a quaint commons. <laughs> um, so the, the, the coachman drops you off with that, and the, uh, he like, yeah, we'll make another trip out uh, in the morning whenever mm. you're ready, but... <laughs> Uh, this, if I hope you have some place to stay tonight, uh, and <laughs> okay, and that's perfectly Luca. normal. It's not like the obvious. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you survive the night. I'll pick you up in the morning. Luca. <laughs> um, 
So, uh, who wh you you have been here before? Uh, so yeah. you you know the town and you know the. I mean, there's not that many people in it. And he probably to, knows everyone. <laughs> yeah, com com compared to the uh, <laughs> milieu you have in uh, London, definitely yeah. everyone is a name to a face. Yeah. So, uh, who and you know, it's evening time, so most people are probably having supper or even going to sleep already. So, uh, what? Uh, where would you like to go? Um, is there a tavern? I don't think it's large enough for a tavern. Oh, okay. There might be like okay. a, a public, like a public house, uh, kind of where folks go to drink after, like before dinner or maybe on holidays. Oh, but I not see. like not like a, there, there's not enough people to support like a tavern with a bunch of folks in it. Yeah, but um, there's probably somewhere that sells alcohol occasionally. Yeah, but there's not going to be like a gathering place for people at this time. Probably right? not. Yeah, everyone kind of homebodies. Okay. Um, Although the, there, there may be, you know, uh, vagabonds or uh, layabouts. This is this is children. a very stupid thing for Francis to do, but it feels yes. like what Francis would do. Yes. I think his first instinct is he's going to talk to Nell about. This. Excellent. <laughs> uh, awesome. I yeah. Mean, so. Yeah, Nell, Nell lives in a, um, you know, it is a, a small house. She lives by herself. Uh, yeah. It's not like a crone's, uh, like, hole in the wall covered with moss or anything. We're not it's in just Macbeth a, all of a sudden. <laughs> yeah, it's just it's just a smaller house. Uh, it, yeah. is, it is by the edge of town. I think it's on the edge opposite the direction from, like, the north edge of town. Okay. Um, and it's, you know, she's, she's not completely isolated, but... You know, she definitely like doesn't share a yard. She doesn't have a cookout with everyone, um, and she has a, a small garden of her own. Um, oh. In 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 the, uh, it's not like a, a a farm for sure, but it's definitely a a garden that's uh, not overgrown, but very full of uh, you know herbs and medicinal stuff. Yeah, uh, and in fact, as you uh, as you approach it, you can like you really get hit with the sort of pungent smell of something <laughs> something medicinal from the from the garden. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, and uh, and there is a, a light on, uh, and it's like the there's no glass in the windows. <laughs> there's yeah. Sure. So uh, you you can definitely tell that she is there and possibly puttering about doing something. Um. Yeah. So I. Yeah, I do think Francis just walks up and knocks gently on the door, <laughs> and yeah. he has not. I don't think he adjusts his manner at all to be like I am out in the sticks. This mm -hmm. is. Exactly as if he were calling on Theodore Braithwaite or something. Nice. <laughs> um, yeah, and you can hear uh, hear her moving towards the door. And before she before she opens it, uh, you hear Quinn. <laughs> all, all, already, and it opens the door, <laughs> and uh, you see her. And she is, um, you know, they call her the crone. She is. Like I think maybe... lovely as always are the words out of Francis's mouth. <laughs> as yeah, soon as she answers. Uh, she's definitely not any older than anyone at Hargrave, uh, yeah. which you know um, spans a range. But hmm. if you had to say, you know, you'd probably put her in her early to mid thirties. Yeah, uh, and she's just a uh, kind of plain looking, uh, yeah. not not ugly, not beautiful, just like um, has uh, it. It would be stringy brown hair if it wasn't pulled back with a mm -hmm. uh, like a little. A wreath, no, yeah. not a wreath, like a not not a vine, but some sort of dried uh, twine, I guess. Yeah. Um, and you can see inside that she has uh, prepared something in a pot, and there are two sure. dogs. <laughs> um. Yeah, and I think Francis, um, at this point, his mission in coming there has left has left him briefly, and he's just doing only pleasantries. Like, yeah. How delightful that I get to see you again. <laughs> I, I had a quick trip out from, from London, and I'm going to be in town for a bit, taking care of some business, but I thought it was very important to say hello to my old friend. <laughs> of course. You, you don't need to do all that to me. Just come in and come in, have a seat, and <laughs> grab yourself of, a bowl. Help yourself. Oh, <laughs> me picks a bowl obligingly, and... Uh, and she she kind of sits down uh, in front of her own, but it's like you know uh, roots mostly, um, turnips and radishes and potatoes. Um, but it's it's good, it's tasty. It's uh, uh, yeah. Well, I think Francis well is like noting all of the flavor tones. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like um, he has an aesthetic like, experience, so he's going yeah. on and on about it. 
Yeah, she's kind of like went out of her way to make something a little bit nicer than usual, but it's still, you know, yeah. <laughs> um, and uh, so she kind of like takes a sip and without even looking up, just sort of oh, no. says like, so the boy. Um, and I think at this point, <laughs> Um, I, I think that, no, I think the initial response is not thought through. I think he just says, yes, several. <laughs> and, and, then, <laughs> and then sort of, oh, right, uh, yes, there is one. There have been several boys here at the house. I, th- I think she like looks that. up surprisedly at that point. She's like, <laughs> oh, tell I me mean, more. I'm mis- oh, and then, I think, yes, he's then going through like recounting. <laughs> Like you can kind of see a montage of dumb, dumb show, like <laughs> the dapper boy showing up, the vampire child, the, um, the yes, the Frankenstein child put together, <laughs> um, showing her the paintbrush that he has on him at this point. Um, ah, yes, but right. Oh, that is why I'm here. It, it like telling the story. <laughs> It brings him back around <laughs> to finally making the connection of um yeah and the father came but what was the father's name uh father's name was uh, eugene eugene batten yeah and okay cool cool and and you would not believe this now but eugene batten took the trip to our grave house with what do you think he brought with him a goose <laughs> <laughs> I think he's just like crestfallen that his game has amounted to nothing. <laughs> no, and I think to the point that he says, "No, it was it it was it, it was a goose." Yes. <laughs> and and guess what he claimed about the goose? He claims that I put a curse on his boy who is sick in bed right now. I turned him into a goose, or put his spirit into a goose, or his soul, or whatever he says it, you are very you are very good at this game i should not play against <laughs> you in cards at the album well uh, uh fuck what's his name um Bat- batten has Eugene, n- not uh, been quiet about his oh, accusations here in town has, everyone has, everyone thinks that i've done this about it? Oh, oh, everyone dear. myself <laughs> the most of course uh you can can is there any na- other name of a person in the town that I have access to? Um, you know his wife's name is uh, I have his wife's name and well, it is mm, written down somewhere. Angela. Oh, well, could I could I invent? Could I have? Oh yeah, yeah. Even old Winthorpe. He yeah, never even old Winthorpe. It. That's impossible. Yeah, we we've got a couple dozen people to invent. So pick pick uh, who you like. <laughs> cool, old Winthorpe. Uh, I think Old Winthorpe is like the the village uh, bachelor uh, ex farmer. Like he he, oh, okay. he, would be re- he would be retired if he if that was a thing. But he's uh, he kind of relies on the generosity of the village to oh, yeah, make his yeah. way. <laughs> but he, but he, he's not he's not a exigent or anything. He's just you know doesn't doesn't really keep up as much. Um, yeah, that that old coot believes everything that believes everything that Batten tells him. I, I think Francis at this point thinks back through all the stories of Hargrave that he told Old Winthorpe. And, <laughs> and I'm guessing for all of those stories, Old Winthorpe didn't believe a damn word Francis said. <laughs> this is gonna be, well, uh, it, I, well, I would, we are trying to get the, to the bottom of this. There is clearly something about that goose. <laughs> Meaningful look. <laughs> um, and if this story is nonsense, obviously, when would you put a soul into a goose? What could it be about <laughs> Eugene's goose that is so remarkable? <laughs> um, right, I think this is an information goof. Or okay, is, yeah, is it? It's information, and I, I I just went through some Brenda Wood stuff again. I, it is, oh yeah, it's called the information information <laughs> move. Yes, not yet, yeah, not meddling. Meddling. Um, uh, yeah, so this is an information move, and I think it's clearly with presence at this point. Okay. Um, so uh, you're good there. So you'd be rolling plus three, uh, unless you want to incorporate the paintbrush the somehow. Paintbrush. No. <laughs> I, I, I think the paintbrush is present in the scene, but not being used as <laughs> to affect dual die rolls. Okay, so fire right. plus three. 
let's okay hold on that and then what huh? oh it won't let me do that sorry this is taking me longer than expected there we go Ta -da. 11 11 great what's the deal with this goose <laughs> um I actually finished the list of clues, so I have clues to oh, give you now. Oh, I actually gave you a clue as a moment. Oh, well. Um, <laughs> uh, or, or, or one of the clues is the pungent smell of medicinal herbs. Not, oh, not, not okay. A moment. A moment. Well, um, who knows that Francis clue, actually noticed that? <laughs> um, let's see. What's a good clue here for you? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, perfect. Um, so what, what's, the, what's the question you're asking her? Um, why would this goose be so arresting all of a sudden and seem to have some sort of spirit in its eyes? Yeah. yeah. Um, so I'm going to paste this clue in. And oh, she, no. kind of, uh, she kind of like sits back and uh, <laughs> she, she's produced a, 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 a smoking pipe. Uh, and has you know, packed it with something from the garden, no doubt. And I think um, Francis is just looking enviously at the pipe, but not kind seeing of, anything. Kind of uh, looks at the ceiling, puffs a little bit, and uh, says, um, "You may have heard of this uh, because of who you are, but not many, not many others have it at the top of mind." There was a um, there was a town in uh, France, out in the country. Um, I'll tell you yellow southern. Uh, there's, there's a there's a, a town in France uh, back in the 16th century, and well, for a while the people there got taken with a mania where they would dance and dance and dance until they. I think Francis is from, just grinning at this, like, and yeah. then kind of falls a bit at collapse, like yeah. <laughs> uh, until they collapse from exhaustion or injury. Uh, this town was uh, stricken with it, and of course. I don't, um, you know, most, most modern folks have their explanations, but what do you think they blamed back then? Hmm. Particularly excellent troubadours coming to town with music that could not be written. No, okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I like your optimism, <laughs> Quinn, but. I've had many was... a day where I was compelled to dance by the, <laughs> by the <laughs> string quartets hired by Mr. Vittorio, but, ah. Uh, Another but, story for another time. But never by an old woman living by herself at the age of town. Of course they blamed her. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, dear. Well, that's not good. If anything, they should have been thanking her and blaming themselves for not showing adequate restraint. <laughs> that, is, that is one way to look at it, I suppose. <laughs> but you know how it is. Anytime a bad crop comes in, the cow goes sick, the goose starts getting a glint in its eye. And a, and a mm. taste for shiny things. Oh, shiny things. Mm. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm sure he's gotten a hold of a shiny thing or two where you are. Uh, mm. Becky did bring you a knife at one point. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think Francis is putting together the pieces <laughs> on that, though. It's, it's, always, it's always the old woman's fault. I'm not mm. even old. Mm. Um, I just keep to myself, and sometimes... When things need taken care of, I take care of them. But do I get thanks? The thanks I get is being left alone. Ah, well, you'll have me out of your hair soon enough, as I. Oh, no. and she kind of reaches over and puts her hand on your on your knee and says, "You, you can stay <laughs> as long as you like." Uh, and there's a little twinkle. Um, <laughs> he raises the, the cup crossfade. <laughs> uh, crossfade to the face. to the uh, hospital. To um, what's the name Careless of the hospital? Whisper plays. <laughs> uh, Bethlehem Royal Hospital, where you have been before. Um, yeah. I think Chris Francis had been here. Mm. Oh, so, uh, this is where he, he got his big, big shoulder eaten. Oh, yeah, that's right. The grab on. Yeah, this is where we were like, we don't need to. This is the last place we were where we were like, we shouldn't split up anymore. <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, tell me a little bit about your entourage. What, what does that look like when you uh, roll up to the hospital? Um, I feel like Azrael is just really precocious. So Azrael has probably already researched this uh, sanatorium and it's giving us like a history, giving us like the briefing. <laughs> now, he, uh, is your, he is your perfect baby, but to the casual observer, um, <laughs> Uh, he look. He looks like a. a I won't hear a thing. Looks like a, a slaughterhouse fell over. I imagine he'd have to be covered a lot, and then you. Know, yeah. Covered. So what is what does that look like? Oh my gosh! I let Asriel choose what he wants to wear. <laughs> uh, I think um, he's quite prudent that if you do that. <laughs> I think that he understands. Yeah, I think yeah. as as mother, I'm like oh, no. <laughs> But, you can borrow my wooden mask if he likes. I think that he does wear like a little cl cloak. Yeah. He kind of has like, the aspect of like a, an oil drum kind of shape and size. Basically, he's like got a big, big round torso and weird kind of a little bit too long legs and little burned hands. Um, Gorgeous and, face. Yeah. <laughs> and Gary Oldman on his head. <laughs> um, but yeah, he definitely does like that. Perfect a baby. <laughs> If, if trench coats were a thing, that's what would be otherwise a, a cloak of some yeah, kind. Yeah, he's got like a like kind of a, a cloak, like one of, uh, actually one of Gareth's old cloaks. Yeah. Um, because it fits his head pretty well. And what about Emil? Emil? I imagine when he's not covered in blood, he probably pretty much just looks like a normal little boy, right? So you can I'm keeping him, are you keeping him uh, sort of dressed as the urchin he was playing at being, or is he dressed in the fanciness of his current station? Um, I, I would uh, offer him nicer clothes, but I give, ultimately give him the choice. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm sure it's hanging out at the hanging out at the banquet. They like they just drape him in velvet and lace. So if I think he's more comfortable devices, than his yeah. raggedy, stinky urchin clothes. Yeah. And what about Henry and Lewis? Wait, who's Henry? Henry is Henry. Harley. Harley. I keep calling him Harley's son in my. Uh, oh, Henry that's right. Harley's son. Uh, Henry. Henry... <clears throat> I feel like uh, Lewis keeps running off, so <clears throat> Henry has had to hold. Um, Lewis, but Lewis is not enjoying being held. <laughs> and I feel like knowing that Lewis would probably be a problem, uh, and we like and he likes carrots. We probably Henry has probably has a bag of carrots slung over his back, so he's got <sighs> a, a supply of carrots to constantly lure Lewis back with or keep him. In, he starts getting a little riled up. He can make most... have, have a dead carrot. Yeah, and he's going what? through them too quickly. But and, and Lewis is also like trying. Also, Lewis has figured out that there are carrots, and is trying to get climb over a bit to the back. So it's just yeah. <laughs> what? Azriel leading the way, get, briefing us on like the architecture and the history of the building. The rest of us following, and then Henry in the back with Lewis, like just trying to keep him. <laughs> trying to keep um, him out of the carrot stash. Out of the carrot bag. But Paloma and Sarah, which of you is ultimately responsible for Lewis? In this case, uh, I would probably, if I, I mean, if we needed someone, I'd probably say me because I remember feeling, I remember kind of like I was one of the first ones to sort of bond with Lewis and be like, he's got a soul. All right. Uh, so, yeah, Sarah, I feel like Paloma is skeptical that this is a person. <laughs> I think Paloma's like, this is a goose. <laughs> that's why I think that's why Paloma has had Azriel look up goose behaviors because I was like, mm -hmm. I'm going to show you. Science is going to win today. So Sarah is like, goose. I can feel the human presence inside him. Sarah, what are you afraid might happen if Lewis gets away from Henry? <laughs> oh, no. Um, uh, that we won't be able to find him since technically he's, technically he's in Francis's charge. So I feel extra, you know, <laughs> responsible. Like, like, it'd be like, losing someone else's pet if you're a pet sitting and you're like oh god i'm sorry i lost your beloved animal yeah i think it's worse than that i think oh or that we have to replace it with a different goose <laughs> Lewis number two <laughs> don't, don't uh, we have to put a soul into so that we 
just try to convince it's, Francis. It's that worse it's than <laughs> that. I, I think that someone, possibly even La Hortensia, may catch him and eat him. Gosh. <laughs> Well, she'll try. Sound... <laughs> so, yeah, she'll do her best. If she can catch him, <laughs> the then threats are fighting. She each should other. be on our team. <laughs> um, we found the ultimate, job. the ultimate solution: that the threats take each other out. <laughs> I think this is going to be <sighs> composure, because it's kind of like a management kind of thing, <laughs> trying to keep shit together. Uh, so that would be, uh, this will be a night move with two dice plus one, unless you want to use a thing. I was looking at my things that are rapidly dwindling. Man, remember it? <laughs> but the point in time, I've got, I've got so many things! And now I'm like, oh god, my things are starting to look scarce. Um, Can Sean oh, help so with work related stuff? <laughs> Ooh. I would, I would give you Sean, Sean's help on that. <laughs> Sean, I just read his Sean like looks down on this goose. Yeah, yeah, that, that works. That works. Yeah, I think so. Cool. So three dice top two plus one. Do, do, do. I'll add that Freya is batting at your images on the Zoom window. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, that's a solid 12. So managed. Oh, I, did I roll it? Oh, I rolled it. <laughs> the goose gives us a mastermind. I, I wasn't aware I'd actually rolled it yet. It must have been a finger slip, but that works. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so so Harley, uh, Harley, ma That's or wrong. not Harley, uh, Hen Henry maintains his uh, his grip on on Lewis, and uh, in fact, I think that might uh, that might come in handy uh, coming up. Awesome. <laughs> so uh, with your, do you let do you let Azriel, uh sort of reach up and ding the front bell? <laughs> <laughs> the hospital. Yeah, I realize that I still have the condition jealous, so I'm gonna use it like Francis mm. does, and like mm -hmm. he, Azriel like really wants to be on his own, and he's pretty precocious. But Paloma's hovering a little bit, it's like nice. So he he does, and then Paloma like reaches for it at the same time. Um, yeah, I think there's a kind of kind of harried looking uh, older gentleman at the desk in a in a nurse's uniform. Um, kind of thin with sort of gray temples and he kind of like looks at you and looks a little bit confusedly because he can't really see Asriel over the over the desk kind of looks over shakes his head looks at you <laughs> can I help you <laughs> ma'am can I help you or all of who are you visiting someone uh yes yeah we were here to see um well, we were visiting with a, with a friend of ours, Hortensia is visiting her son, and we thought we would come pay a visit as well and bring the crew. You're here to visit, I'm sorry? T Titus. And he kind of goes a little bit grayer than he already is in the face. Is Titus Fig? Yeah, are you with Hortensia. Are you with the yard? Uh, obviously not, or you would have known. Well, we, um, I mean, we're with the yard, but we brought uh, the figs in to the yard. So we, we I know assisted. that lady, whatever her name was. Uh, that lady's name is? is uh, Roberta? Inspector. One of my many heart thoughts. <laughs> um, da -da 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 -da, we're a factory Spectre. boy. We People in places. Mother. I need to study Sergeant the Sergeant Mallory. I don't I don't think she had a first name. Uh yeah. Sergeant Mallory. Oh um, yeah. I'll be like, ah oh, no, Mallory won't touch this. <laughs> well, I'm I'm sorry to uh that you've wasted your time coming here. I'm sure you've read about the unpleasantness at least. Please explain plainly, sir. Sounds like we didn't, so maybe tell me. Uh, we, um... We've been busy solving mysteries. <laughs> we have a family to raise. And, like, hugs Azrael a little too tight. He's, like, checked mm. away. <laughs> I, I only pray you, uh, you were able to do something about Mr. Fig. He, um, he played as if he were sicker and weaker than 
he was. And the orderlies uh, drop their guard around them. Uh, Wesley, I mean, they, um, one of them is dead. The other um, is still being treated. Uh, Are you telling me that Fig is on the loose again? Is this what you're telling us? Yes, he he bit <clears throat> he bit half of Wesley's face off, and then escaped mm -hmm. through a window or a door or like, we don't know. There was blood everywhere. There's not a, a single trail to follow. Yes, uh, Titus Fig is no longer here, and we've been. Um, very nervous since that evening. As well, you should be. Oh my gosh. As should you, I imagine. Indeed. I'm sure he'll be none too happy that we brought him in. Oh, you say you brought his family into the yard? Uh, uh, well, I mean, we, uh, yes, we've, uh, we captured him, turned him over to, to the yard. I would. Wait, this is the one we didn't get, right? Oh, he's not the one. I thought because we I was trying to oh, remember, he... we killed one, right? We. Yeah. So uh, to recap, one was dragged to hell, right? Yeah. To recap, the figs. Um, <laughs> oh yeah. Uh, Flashback time. Titus, Titus Fig is the father. Uh, he's a giant, giant oh, he's guy. The uh, he's the father, and he was captured. Um, and put in this uh, mental hospital. Oh, right, 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 right. Uh, Ober, the son, uh, was the one with the big knife who got dragged to hell. He got um, dragged to hell. Patrick was the son who Patrick. thought he was a cat, I believe, and he was taken in. Oh, he's a bird. He was a bird. A bird. He was a bird. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Uh, he was a bird. And so he's uh, the one we turned over to Scotland still. Yard. Yes. The other one you turned over to hell. <laughs> hell Yard. <laughs> Uh, oh, Titus, no. we have not personally been in contact with yet. Right? Francis was. Francis, did. Francis Yes. And had to wear a mask. Yeah. Had to, had to, had to put on a mask to have his pectoral muscles from being torn off. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That sounds familiar now. Uh, yeah. So we saw, uh, the, the attendant's just like, yeah, figures on the loose. And I pray for anyone who. He might think has slighted him. Oh no! Um, I think that's the end of that scene. <laughs> and then uh, let's do the next should, scene. It cuts it immediately to Francis's face. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, the next unseen. Who wants to do that? Peter or Nick? Uh, I I. I have a hit on it, I think. Yeah, go for it. Uh, I'll do the so, next uh, one. Narrate a scene in which Charles does something to get under Nancy's skin. Um, so I think there's the two styles of decoration. Um, yeah, yeah. I think Charles really likes um, hunting equipment and like mounted heads of animals and really big, poorly painted paintings of men out in the woods <laughs> sending their dogs out to, to hunt something. Um, his part of the, uh, of the house has the biggest fireplace, I think. And, um, and I think, what is Nancy's style of decoration? I think definitely Nancy has a lot of like, patterned wallpaper and um, mm. lots of fabrics and, and maybe not pastel, but light and off-white soothing colors. And I think that we can kind of see a, a gradual thing of Francis infiltrating <laughs> different bits of hunting stuff into rooms that clearly do not need them. Like there's Charles. A, Charles, yeah, yeah, not Francis. Um, like there's a, there is a very, <laughs> Francis would do it charmingly. <laughs> um, like you can see one of Nancy's rooms has uh, a mantelpiece and suddenly the mantelpiece has um, like 
a small taxidermied animal in an attack position and uh, yeah and a, and a <laughs> rifle hanging over it um and maybe mm. um a mount a framed document of uh, declaring the rights of the hunter in in the, the village. in the village of of uh what is the village that francis is in uh ardily ardily in the in the in the obscure village of ardily you know be it known that hunting being one of the <laughs> god's most favored practices for the human for the for man upon the earth that these rights shall be you know eat Irre irrevocable to all <laughs> who come through the commons of Ardley. I love it. And um, you just see um, Nancy looking at, looking up at it, and just <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Uh, let's Fucking let's bad. take our first break before we jump back to Ardley. How about that? Take five. See you in five. Two.
Sometimes putting in eye drops makes it worse. Oh no. <laughs> oh, now I've got a little thing. I know. Now you have two problems. Now I have two problems. So it looks like we have Alessandra. All roads lead to the alien Martin. Hey. Welcome. Oh, welcome. All joining us here. <laughs> Perfect entry point for the between. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, great. So Francis is in Ardley, uh, had some dinner uh, with uh, the crone, mm. the, the lovely Nell, um, <laughs> who uh, has been, uh, you know, harassed by the villagers as women who don't participate in the hierarchy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, what... Uh, What's next for Francis? Hmm. Um, let's see. Give me a second. So he's finished that. What and what did he get? He found out about. Uh, she told you the story about the dancing mania in a medieval village in France. Okay. okay. Uh, say Titus dance. Titus, Titus dance. Oh, um. <clears throat> Uh, do you want to? Oh, oh, sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. I had a, I had a hit on. Maybe he knows that there is just the most gossipy person in Ardley. Mm -hmm. Maybe uh, that's old Winthorpe. Maybe it's old Winthorpe, right? Yeah. Um, I think, I, I think the, you know, there's not the tavern, but I think old Winthorpe is the guy who lives by himself. I think probably his, um, uh, he lost his family as you do in Victorian times. Mm. And so he has a he has a house to himself, but has converted it uh, to uh, his his own likings. Yeah, I believe he has a, a, a still in the uh, in like in a back room, like not even it's not ah. hidden as long yeah. as like entryway, uh, some place to sit, some place to sleep, kitchen still. Uh, and a, a, a small you know, quarter acre out back to grow. Rains. This is, this is what you had those days instead of hydroponic gardens. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and uh, he probably he probably stays up uh, drinking, and I think he has actually stayed up a little bit later because he saw your coach come in and oh, sure. <laughs> was also probably anticipating a call. Yeah, and so I think that's I think he takes his leave of Nell. Tell, he tells Nell he's going to go talk to Old Winthorpe next, just to get. Yeah. Get the news about the town. <laughs> All um, right. Well, you take care of yourself and let me know if you need anything. Yeah. <laughs> Tips his hat and and walk <laughs> dabbers off into the into the moonlit night. <laughs> yeah. And it's you know, it's not too far. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, and he's at home. And when you knock on the door, he he welcomes you in. And mm. yeah, he's he's an older gentleman, probably looks older than he is. Mm. Um and yeah, this is like, come on in, Mr. Quinn. <laughs> I, 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 I've got a fresh bottle for you. Ah, excellent. I will give the usual payment. I have come for two things, alcohol and gossip. <laughs> oh, <laughs> gossip. Well, well, let's sit around like a couple of old women and talk about the village then, shall we? I would, should like nothing better. I will tell <laughs> you my news first. Eugene Battle, <laughs> Battle? Um, Eugene uh, Batten. Eugene Batten came all the way to London with uh, ah the boy. Ah uh, no, what what do you think he came with? What do you think he delivered? <laughs> that, that old woman woman has had that in for that boy for so long. She no, it wasn't she put an a, old woman. What do you she think put a he hex on him? The house? <laughs> well, the the goose with the boy in it. No, it was a goose. Yeah, it was a goose. Everyone is so good. Yes, it was a goose with poor boy. eyes that had a soul. Of course, because Lewis is sick in his bed, Someone hasn't moved, understand. barely <laughs> breathes. That goose was running around town, take, taking, taking this from that. He knocked over my sill once. 
Is that the sort of thing Lewis would have done in life in his human form? Uh, I I didn't. He's the one person in the town I never really interacted with, but everyone talking about him used such language. <laughs> <laughs> um, you still have busybody. I, th I oh. think. Um, I think this is going to be another information move. Oh no! I think it, okay. I think it is going to be with presence, but I think uh -huh. it's going to be at disadvantage. Oh um, no! Yeah. Fair enough. Uh, okay, one second. Let me get that sorted out. You're a, a little bit too, uh, like too leaning into the yeah, gossiping. Yeah, yeah, But more, more, more gossiping and less uh, detective work. Okay, so two, three D, and then lowest the bottom plus two three. plus three. Yeah. Okay, so that is five plus three is eight. Five plus three is eight. All right. Complication. <laughs> um. Yeah, let me look at the clue list here. Um, yeah, uh, yeah, he uh, pulls off. Let me make these check boxes so I can check them off. Um, he, like, just, uh, I think both of you have had a, a couple cups by now, mm -hmm. uh, and he, you know, like, reaches over and like pulls open a drawer and tosses you a pair of spectacles that have been broken uh, the glass the glass is cracked uh, oh. half out of it and they're yeah. snapped in half and one arm is bent As... so tell me did the boy do that or the goose are these your glasses with the hook they were my glasses i can't see a thing without them no, this is nonsense. I shall, I shall have my man in the town, in town, take care of you as soon as I can. Don't, no, don't, no, don't bother, I, Master Quinn. I, I insist on helping everyone all the time right now. Uh, so, are are you saying Lewis, in his human form, broke your glasses? I don't have evidence of that, but I wouldn't put it past him. Um, I think. The complication I'm going to give you oh, no. is that Dear buddy. Uh, old Winthorpe is actually one of your thralls. Oh, okay. Uh, and so we'll mark your uh, masterwork for that. Sure. Okay, let me find that. Ding. There's a mark. Yeah. Uh, and as said before, he uh, looks much older than you know him to be. Uh, and maybe older than he was. I mean, obviously older than it was last time you saw him, but <laughs> more more than you would expect. Oh no. Um, yeah, and I wonder if Francis is trying to find some delicate because I think he feels compelled by busybody to to comment on it. Mm -hmm. um, and I so I think he just asks vaguely if if Winthorpe is in good health or has any other problems besides the. The eyeglasses being broken. As good as can be expected, Quinn. Wow. You know how it is. <laughs> um, let's see. And so he's a worshiper. I could take it away to destroy him, but you <laughs> could. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> nothing. Nothing there seems useful. <laughs> Um, yeah, so I've asked him whether Lewis was a jerk or not. I, I don't know. I, I feel like story-wise that kind of brings yeah. the interaction with him. Cool. And you probably uh, drink into the wee hours. Oh, yeah, that sounds good. Yeah. Uh, awesome. Back to uh, London, then, we are. So, uh, leaving the hospital with <laughs> the entourage, um, Tell me where you go from there. Uh, I thought I'd see if Emil. I was like, I know, I know you have such incredible, unearthly gifts, my boy. Are you able to say, smell the blood? Oh. Yes, the man who Some... is in that room. I, I Wait, is be... this child like Bad. a bloodhound? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Vampire bloodhound? Yep. Uh, uh, <clears throat> he was a, I, I didn't want to be presumptuous. 
but I did. I do feel drawn. Uh, and before, he, without finishing his sentence, he kind of like looks up at you for a moment, almost for approval, and then kind of assumes it and dashes off down uh, an alley uh, near the hospital. Don't forget, we're not all super fast, boy. <laughs> <laughs> we're all huffing behind him, especially Azriel, his tiny lips. <laughs> we are but earthly humans. <sighs> And Harley oh, yes. is trying to manage the, the goose and <laughs> running at the same time. The goose also, oh. it, it sets the goose off. The goose wants to run after it, like it's chasing. <laughs> the goose is flapping. <laughs> like a predatory. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, finally got it. Yeah, yeah so, the um, weird hallways of the asylum. <laughs> yeah, so uh, he dashes down like a, a back alley and then kind of around, you know, turns a corner and you know, one of those places like in the middle of a block. And it's probably a it's probably a prime time to use my beacon in the dark. Who? Uh would you like to use your beacon in the dark? <laughs> yes, yes. All right. Uh when you walk the streets of London at night, uh you walk where eagles dare. Oh, um your consciousness spreads across the city like a vast spider web roll with sensitivity. Let's see what we get. Oh, you are, you are also face bitten. You have something in common with that early. Oh shit! Am I still face bitten? Fuck! It's not like you cured all that. Oh, well, look at that face bitten. Oops. Uh, Too late now. Maybe okay, uh, Francis and I. Uh, sensitivity, come on, do it, do it. Yeah. Yeah, that's a twelve. Um. Cool. Cool. So uh, on a hit, where are we here? Uh, on a 10 points. Great. <laughs> they disappear. So you're immediately confronted by a threat or personified danger related to the threat. Um, and I think what happens is the goose appears. The, uh, <laughs> <laughs> the, the goose has already appeared. Uh, I, th I think what happens is I get double face bitten. You, bitch. You're, you're kind of huffing and puffing behind, uh, behind Amel. And he uh, kind of like they're turned back. Like there's like the main alley in the middle of the block, and has to, he has to turn down the side. He's kind of like frantically smelling, and uh, he like looks. He turns into the alley and waves you in, and he's kind of waiting a few steps inside the alley uh, for you to turn the corner. And as soon as you do, he uh, goes to run some more and <clears throat> he takes a step and you hear a uh like a, a, a snap as if a, a trap has been uh, like a snare has been caught uh and uh, an iron gate sideways juts across the alley and kind of like pierces him and pins him up against oh. the wall um that would have killed a normal person but he's just mad <laughs> uh he's pinned up against the wall there um and uh at the end of the alley you see the silhouette of a uh woman in a long dress down to the floor uh with one arm pinned up uh you can ask them two questions Where's your lair? How can I get you to? What do you intend to do? What do you want from? What frightens you? Let's see, beacon in the dark. If you had to phrase it. <clears throat> um, yeah, I suppose it'll be a, a version of what do you intend to do first? Like, well, well. Hort Hortensia, that's her name, right? La, La Hortensia. La Hortensia. 
La Hortensia, finally we meet. You got my boy, I got yours. <laughs> oh, I don't think you want my boy. <laughs> I know that you have suffered a great loss. What is it you intend to do about that? Uh, about just in general or about a specific thing? About the specific thing, you, 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 well, you've lost something. I know that you're seeking to recapture something from your past that you have lost. What is it you intend to do? Uh, and they will not answer directly, but rather in the form of a clue. Um, ooh. <laughs> um, ooh, yeah, that one's great. Copy that over. Um, all right, there we are. Boom. Um, she says, uh, look at your feet. And uh, at your feet, kind of scattered around the alley, uh, right in front of where you stopped, is a, a small pile of hands uh skeletal hands each one smaller than the next <laughs> uh, she says you took my boys away from me i see that you all have gotten yourself some children of your own i'll start with the hands they're very delicate you have to boil them a little bit longer than the rest pick all the little pieces off i'll work my way up I sure you'll be awake the entire time. And now that obviously uh, your business seems to be permanently closed. Where is your lair these days? Where is it you're making your home now? Where is La your Hortensia? lair? Da -da -da. Uh, let's see, in the form of a clue. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Damn it, speak plainly, woman. <laughs> I thought you were going to say the form of a riddle. Oh, here we go. I got it. Um, oh, oh, this is great. So um, she... <laughs> oh, this is so dumb. Um, she kind of... Uh, she pushes in a brick uh, and she, she's kind of like walked towards you. There's that gate across uh, and she, you know, like gingerly steps over one place, but then pushes in something on the wall and uh, like a laundry chute falls open next to where you are. And there's a, a heap of clothing uh, falls out of it. Uh, the dominant color is red. Uh, red because it is they are covered with blood, and uh, you do instantly recognize them as the uniforms of the orderlies from the sanitarium. She says, you were so close. You walked right away. <laughs> Not too bright, are you? And she, like, there's a brick wall on either side, and she walks into the wall, and it looks like she walks through the wall and she just vanishes but as far as you can tell it looks like a normal brick wall and emil is like oathing all over the place like trying to try to pull the gate out of out of his midsection i want her uh, fucking tear Where did apart you learn those swears <laughs> A brothel is not a place to raise a child, Sarah. In Limehouse. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so a bad influence on him. Exactly like a sailor, in fact. <laughs> ah, Literally that's my boy. Where I, where I got beat up. <laughs> um, but I think he, like, even if someone moves to help him, he is strong enough to just, like, pull it mostly out. And the it's got the, like, fleur-de-lis on the end of it. And he oh. kind of pulls chunks of his... Mm. midsection out they get like a little bit of small intestine gets caught on it and 
strings out and he just instinctually even though like he's just, super yeah. strong i'm just a dude i would instinctually be trying to help and like yeah and yeah. i think Paloma's Lynn, well, you're medical, probably making medical, it worse <laughs> paloma's like trying to help with medical supplies but it's like <laughs> holding the guts and it's like uh, you need this uh but i also um, needed to put my hand in guts so oh yeah yeah hey. uh, he, oh, he just it, it, it Can't hurts help myself. but he's he is more just mad than anything else. I think Paloma's like, D -d 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 we should put these back in you. And he just, he just like yanks yanks out whatever was hanging out and throws it oh. on the ground. I, mean, I think he, uh, I don't know what you Tight, think, never mind. Like tight, tightens like a little velvet sash around his midsection. It says, uh, I'll kneel down to him and say, listen, my boy, I understand you're angry as am I with this. Let this be your first lesson. Sometimes it's a time for patience, for hastiness. We'll just make mistakes and you will not get your quarry together. We will get our revenge on her. I promise you that and we, I will, we, we will get it together. We will not let this injury go unanswered, my boy. Every mistake now comes with like a little after school special from one of us. <laughs> let this be a lesson. What are you afraid might happen if the bloodlust <laughs> overtakes him? Yes. Um, that he'll just, you know, yeah, just immediately on his own right now, just rush off at super speed to go kill her. Like now, right now. Yeah, I think it's, I think it's worse than that. Um, he does that, but he goes through anyone standing between him and her, <laughs> uh, including. Whoever happens to have been Oh no, that's him. us. <laughs> um, I think since you're trying to talk him out of it, I think this is presence. You're trying to focus him in. Uh, so it's going to be two dice plus one. Yeah, and on. I'm going to say that's with disadvantage because your face is still all bitten up and the blood is delicious. Uh, unless you want to use a thing to bring it back to normal. I hate you, Mark Major. I hate you. <laughs> Wood mask really. would block the. <laughs> I, I, that's exactly what I was looking at. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. I have a face. I was going to go for, go for advantage, but now I just got to go for normal. <laughs> put a face in your face. Yeah, do you want to put the mask on to cover yeah, up your I guess I'll put the mask on. Put on a mask. Um, um, what does it. What does it feel like when you put Sally's mask on. Oh no. Because it's not just also, a normal wooden mask. No, I've been it's, watching Sally also. What's she doing? It's a uh, she's she's it's, off doing her own thing tonight. Living her best it's, life. <laughs> it's surprisingly comfortable. Yeah. Way more comfortable than you would expect a wooden mask to be. Yeah. Um cool. So like I kind of think wonder like why I haven't just been wearing this around. Yeah. Oh no. Wait, it, didn't we in Brendawood Bay have masks like this that like yeah. we just fit on your face without falling off? Oh, that's right. Sure <laughs> and we're really comfortable. Yep, you sure did. There wasn't anything bad about those, right? No, no, no they were great. Was... They were great. Yeah. Um, right. Two plus for you. Yeah, they are. Hey, look at that. Yeah. What am I All right. Oh. A 12. Did I close my dice roller? <laughs> my no, second you. 12. I haven't roll. rolled yet, so I haven't seen any of the rolls. <laughs> I forgot this. I haven't signed in yet. Um, I'm a good cool. vampire daddy. Standing so this in. not only wow. works, but gives you some advantage again. Um, magical mask advantage. Yeah. <laughs> magical mask advantage. Yeah. Um, yeah, I like that. I, I think the mask does kind of cleave <laughs> to your face a little oh, bit. No. <laughs> um, and... Uh, yeah, it feels good, and you feel you feel good wearing it. Um, but yeah, he but he like immediately just kind of focuses up and like looks up at you. And said, let's go. <laughs> um, let's do the next bit of the unseen. How about? I still uh, face bitten. Yeah. I keep completely forgetting about the unseen. Stuff. <laughs> I uh, have an idea because I yeah. had I thought I knew what this one was going to be, but now this last bit I can do an echo. So, cool. so narrate a scene in which Nancy humiliate humiliates Charles. Um, <laughs> he is not in charge. 
So originally I was going to put little tags on all his animals that were like London Zoo. <laughs> but so maybe that also exists in this world, but um, she knows where those tags are. But I, because La Hortensia was disappearing into the wall, I think Nancy has uh, been um, having an affair with a carpenter mm. who has been putting in secret passageways. He knows how to lay the wood. <laughs> oh! <laughs> and making her some cabinets. You can grab at that um, joint. <laughs> it throws back for an eye drop. Takes uh, it down to 220 <laughs> grit. What? Oh. So sometimes she'll just like, um, sometimes they'll be in the middle of an argument and um, he'll like try to get up in her face and she'll just like touch a bookshelf and disappear. Nice. And he's just left yelling <laughs> at a bookshelf. Or <laughs> actually, she's got one and she's, she's figured one out where. Uh, she touches one of his animals and it flips around and then he's just like yelling at this like musk <laughs> oh that's amazing Come out that's so me. uh and this is so far only happened when it's just the two of them but most recently his mother was and saw him yelling at one of his animals like came in after she left <laughs> came in after she left and was like i think you need to get your brain checked Mm. I love that so much. That's amazing. Okay. Oh, um, thank you for the echo from La Hortensia. Yeah. <laughs> for that. Uh, echoes for everybody. Echo uh, for everybody. Back to Ardley. Uh, Francis is... Um, Francis is not drunk, Aww. but he left, uh, he left old Winthorpe in quite a state. That's stupid. Um, yeah. Um, you, you can tell he's the kind who... Um, is on a sort of maintenance diet of moonshine, but sure. uh, whatever you were doing tonight just completely laid him out. Uh, oh, you are you are unaffected. <laughs> oh well. Um, okay, so let's see. I, but it's really late now, right? Yeah, it is probably like two in the morning now. <laughs> like I'm trying to think of what useful spy stuff he could do <laughs> in the town at this point. Um, yeah, nobody's going to be awake to talk to. Mm -hmm. Um, and there's no like tr troves of documents or anything. Um, let's see, like, there's no clues that are. It's, I, I'm trying to figure out how Francis goes about looking for a clue at this time of yeah. night. What so what what is Francis's plan for? Oh, where is he going like, to stay tonight? Yeah, is he just going to sleep in the commons or? <laughs> I think it's entirely possible that he hasn't thought this through properly. Um, yeah, I think he's he steps out and then realizes that there is that he doesn't have he didn't organize a place to stay. Um. um would he would he bother the um uh would he bother the battens maybe i think that story wise that might be the the best thing i could imagine francis had a running deal with somebody in the town where it's like yeah do you just stay in the manger or whatever if you don't mm. have <laughs> but yeah you, you can do that if you want to but um maybe he has that deal with eugene batten mm. Like that's his closest friend in the town, maybe. And um, there's a thing of like, oh, if this happens to you again, <laughs> if you're out drinking all night, um, there's it's not much, but it's a it's there's some hay bales um, right. where we keep in, in the goat house or whatever. And yeah, so, <laughs> the goat house, I love it. Yeah. So, so yeah, he shrugs can, and makes his way to Eugene Batten's goat goat house. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Um, what's the what's the number right there? Let's say it's six up with us. Um, what is it right now? Mm, oh yeah, the the moon is uh waxing crescent. It's like almost completely new. It's it's very very dark. Oh no! Um, oh no! Yeah. Leg injuries um, that way. <laughs> yeah. What what are you afraid might happen if you stumble in the dark in the goat house? 
Oh, yeah. I mean, I mean, the classic thing is that he's going to step into a hole in the ground and then twist his ankle and fall over. Mm, yeah. Um, I think even worse than that, um, uh, there are not only goats here, but there's a pigsty that you were not aware of. Oh, no. And uh, you would uh, fall over into it and uh, yeah, like, likely get attacked by the pigs at the very least. Oh, uh, possibly. Oh. Even. Uh, fortunately, I think this is going to be Vitality. Um, oh, okay. Straight up. So I think you should be all right. Busy body doesn't seem to interfere with it. Should be all right. Let's see. Oh, no. <laughs> okay, so let's see. Um, oh, or since it's a nice mo night move, you can refuse to do that and do something else instead. Oh, I'm not sure what I like, just fall asleep in the middle of the town. <laughs> uh, I'll go ahead with it and see how, how bad things go. Seven, Seven. So there's a complication. Oh, right. There is a complication. It could have been worse. Yeah, it could have been worse. Um... <laughs> you can always put yeah. on a mask to bump it up a level. Yeah, you could. Or you can, um, or you can just not sleep, make one of your thralls sleep for you. Ooh. Um, what would you prefer? A, a uh, injured leg or to be completely exhausted? Oh, man. Um, both of them sound intriguing. I, <laughs> I'm, I'm more intrigued by exhausted, busy body yeah. Francis coming yes. into play. Yeah. Um, so I think you are, you are able to find uh, the hay bales asleep. Hay bales are if you ever try to sleep on a hay bale, they are not comfortable. Um, <laughs> and especially and, not for Francis, who is used to the fire. Yeah, who's very <laughs> used to it. Um, and so Francis spends a couple hours tossing and turning, uh, <laughs> star staring up through the slats in the roof at the, at the sliver of moon in the sky. <laughs> There's probably a goat making uncomfortable eye contact <laughs> with him. <laughs> Stop <laughs> trying to eat this goat. It's bespoke. <laughs> <laughs> Just screaming all night. <laughs> <laughs> Fixing it with yeah. its little rectangular pupils. Because of course I already live deliciously. You don't have to. Um... <laughs> <laughs> have you met me? <laughs> so I'm um, taking the condition exhausted off of that. Exhausted, idea. yeah. Uh if I, if you get any sleep at all, they are is you know haunted. Mm -hmm. Haunted by goats. Haunted by <laughs> goats. Oh, is that the condition? <laughs> Even a better condition. Yeah. Oh. Um, awesome. Back to London. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna cut directly to the uh, the hospital, um, where your entourage has made it around the back, uh, led by Emil, who has um, sniffed. I just want I just want to uh, give this detail because it's fun for me and no other reason um <laughs> emil uh goes to the went to the uh, brick wall where uh la hortensia disappeared through it and like kind of in a fury just tears it apart and the place where she walked through is actually uh broom straws painted to look like bricks um that's a houdini trick uh so she she like what? had set that up so she could like make a cool exit. Um, well, and I so feel bad about hunting her. She's like, oh. <laughs> I know she needs to be our roommate. <laughs> um, but but he he leads you through there, and there's like a tunnel from uh, several of the buildings nearby to the basement of the uh, of the hospital, and uh, you you follow some twisty passages into oh, the the, uh, the dimly lit clanking basement of the hospital um before we go any further yeah can we solve the mystery yeah mm. let's solve it here can you do you need uh, a, do you I, I think to have so. that discussion or? oh that's a good question yeah um yeah i don't know uh, right now i'm staring at goats <laughs> <laughs> i, I kind of want to i kind of want to say it should be everyone we're looking at the um, same moon, though. <laughs> Somewhere. We've oh. got Lewis with us as Francis' yeah. proxy. <laughs> Maybe I'm, we can I'm get Sean. Lewis, do you think this is plausible? Arc. Lewis thinks it is possible. 
Um, I'm going to I'm going to say that uh, if it's okay with you, um, you can do it with the two of you there, but your role will be with disadvantage. Well, we have an extra clue though. Yeah. So it would be three D. Three D minus two. Lowest two. Three D lowest two top plus one. I'm not a fan of that. But I don't, I don't know. Could go either way. How do we feel about that story wise and player wise? And remember, you can always put on a mask. She says, most people, uh, <laughs> some of us are running low on masks. I heard you like masks. I have not rolled today, and I have a lot of space for masks. <laughs> oh, all right. There you um, go. Uh, it could be fun to, for Francis to come back and realize that they solved a mystery. Without <laughs> it does feel like we are like, aha, aha. Like, I feel like we're getting, like, it would make mm. sense for us to story wise. Oh my gosh. Mm. Yeah, I mean, I definitely, <laughs> I mean, I'm not going to try to push it even in particular, but like, looking at the clues, I definitely have a thought on what it could be. Oh, I'm glad you do because <laughs> hay and hands. Yeah, I don't. So I don't have that. <laughs> well, I would love scarecrow. to hear what you, what you, yeah. Oh, scarecrow. Yeah. I was like, oh, making a human scarecrow. Um, bones. What 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 uh what did La Hortensia Fig lose that she's trying to recapture or remember? So we're doing this. Is that the consensus that we're doing? If that's what well, you I wonder want. if the if the hay. Well, she has the straw wall that we know about, and we also have seen hay. Is she got a magic act? <laughs> I mean, she kind of does already, but yeah. <laughs> Or maybe it was like more burglary. I don't know. Mm. I thought was perhaps, perhaps we had, perhaps now I'm remembering, there's, you know, when you have things like the figs, lots of rumors go around, lots of stories, you know, they, they get blown. You know how boogeyman stories of boogeyman get blown out of proportion? Oh, I heard it was nine feet tall. So it's hard to deduce truth from fiction. But there is one story about the figs that, Supposedly, there was another fig child at one point mm. that died during childbirth. Mm. With and 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 giving their economic status and such, she very well may have been giving birth at home or in a back room filled with hay. And I think she's trying to somehow reconstruct that moment that she lost that child. With the hay, symbol of where she gave birth, I mean, and then the collection of his hands getting smaller and smaller, regressing to baby hand. She hasn't got quite to baby hand yet. And then heap of clothing would have been, you know, the, 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 what they were using to to clean her, to absorb, what, you know, the things they do during birth. Get hot water and clothing and mm -hmm. soak up blood that's coming out down there. and mm -hmm. Especially in a in a in a, I don't know what you would call that, not a miscarriage, but a unsuccessful birth? Or, Still, you know? Stillbirth. Yeah. I think she lost another son. And that's what, mm -hmm. why she's a little bit she's mad. Trying to reca recapture that, uh, the, the, the child she lost, basically. Yes. Mm -hmm. That was my yeah. theory. Yeah, yeah. That sounds good. And Thematic. Yeah, I was like, also, there is one of the brothers that likes to kill children. So, yeah, maybe, Ooh, maybe, maybe it wasn't a stillbirth. Yeah, that's what maybe I, he, that's what I was well, saying. So, like, maybe it was a little brother, birth, but she, yeah. maybe he was assisting with the birth and killed. That was his first kill. kill. Yeah. Maybe he came in, and of course, she's been out of it, and he's like, let I want to hold my little brother. And, and it then, was made of straw. And, and when, when she next comes <laughs> conscious, he had eaten uh, his brother. Yeah. Yeah, he had eaten and, and handed her like a bundle of straw. Ooh. Let's and see if that's you. true. Yeah, let's, see, let's find out. I guess I'm rolling. Do yeah. it. I, you got so uh, three dice, uh, lowest two plus one. Sorry, one more time. Three one. dice. Three dice, lowest two plus one. Plus one. Okay. Because you have three um, clues on the two capacity. Three sixes. <laughs> Let's see. Three. 
Make it happen. Oh, no. <laughs> three and a one plus oh, three and a one, one plus is one a is a four. four. I mm. did a whole six in there. You did. Said. Mocking you. <laughs> It's because he's determined to have us roll disadvantages tonight. He's throwing disadvantages all over the place. We are trying to raise children. <laughs> um, and a six minus the incorrect and the keeper. Reacts. We haven't brought our children along with us this time. <laughs> they don't always do that. Bring your youth to work today. Um, <laughs> yeah, so I think this conversation is happening kind of like in whispers as you're going through the oh, no. through the tunnels. Um, and yeah oof. um and uh emil is leading you and he kind of like stops for a second and puts his hand up and then kind of looks back at you and smiles and laughs a little bit a little little child laugh mm -hmm. and kind of like straightens his shoulders and you know, takes a step that. forward and again there's a click um and from the side of the wall this time uh three or four no, four um, sharpened brooms shoot out, uh, one of which pierces Emil's heart. And he like screams and bursts into flame uh, and like dusts almost immediately. Um, and that happens, and there's a commotion with, uh, you know, the, the Lewis and um, Asriel <laughs> and, and, and Henry. And everyone's kind oh. of panicking a little bit. Uh, Henry. Henry's like, fuck this goose, I'm out, turns around and runs smack into the chest of a very large man with a very large knife uh, who just <laughs> cuts through him and like you all are trapped between this gate and his blade and it's just a slaughterhouse. Oh God. Fe feathers everywhere. Um, it's not, it's not good. Uh, could I try mother's love? <laughs> uh, you can put on a mask. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I don't want email to die. <laughs> okay. Put on the mask. Oh, you got so many masks. To put on. Don't we have a fun new mask with this one? Oh, a you do have mask? the, That's our have goose the, mask. The mask of the gander. Would you like to use it? Is that available or do we have what it? What is. is it? You don't do know yet. It? Oh gosh, yes. Oh, <laughs> we get the custom move by solving the first goose mystery. Yeah. Um, um, so the map of the gander, yeah, you want to use that? Or should I do, let's see, I have a lot of masks available to me. I recently did a, oh, I haven't done any of my masks. I've done one mask of the past. <laughs> so mysterious. Um, Yeah, I, I, I'm just curious about the Gander one. Me too. <laughs> but I want to kind of leave it for oh, Sarah. Oh, for Sarah. Too. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Oh, 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 my yeah, gosh. Yeah. Okay, yeah, I'm not going to touch that one. <laughs> Sarah might need it. Okay, yes. <laughs> goose mask for Sarah. Yeah, okay. Uh, I, I think the, some past ones will be good, too, since I've been dropping. Um... Oh, I can't do the moss-covered gate anymore, either. Yeah, I guess not. Oh, because you're most beloved. Child is already. Oh, but I can alive. destroy a professional rival. Ooh. Okay, I'm not ready for that yet. Um, I think <laughs> some, pa some past ones would be good for Paloma since we're kind of learning that. Yeah. Maybe she never had a child. So, narrate um, a flashback to the first time you experienced love for the person you lost. Oh. Oh. Yeah, I think that. Um, Was it Anne? Mm -hmm. So Anne was Paloma's wife and was a professional rival, um, which might be interesting later, depending. Mm -hmm. And Paloma has always, ha has, was, and will always be in love with the idea she has of Anne, not who Anne always actually is um but the first time paloma realized that and wasn't really what she thought was 
after sh- after that first coming de- after coming out of like not getting tenure that time and being kicked out of the university because Anne had messed with her brain and made her forget all her stuff. Right. Um, <laughs> so she this was the first the first time she confronted Anne about that because she had been taking like she she had her scientific notebooks and was like and this doesn't add up it doesn't make any sense I don't know why I didn't I don't know why I didn't get tenure like all the way up until this point I knew these things and then I didn't um and confronts Anne and they have a big giant fight and I think Paloma is starting to doubt her reality um But she also has a new baby at home. So, uh, or maybe she doesn't. But uh, I think the reality is that Paloma has like created this child as a reality as a way to like have something to love. Um, And sorry, I'm getting to the actual flashback. I'm just trying to build, trying to build it in my mind. Um, first time you experienced love for the person you lost. Um, I think uh, even though Anne had been trying to implant these um, new memories of a child in Paloma, Paloma really wasn't was feeling indifferent toward her child. I was like, okay, we have a child, and has been like had been like experimenting with having Paloma believe that, but this first time of Paloma feeling betrayed by Anne, Paloma's like deep focus on Anne was getting shattered. And so Paloma comes home that day after fighting with Anne about this and sees the baby Lucy. Mm. And it's kind of just playing with the child. The child is like, even though this child is not real, it, in her mind it is t- toddlerish, and it's kind of playing around, and, and Paloma's just kind of like cooing and gurgling back to her, and it's like, well, at least I could trust. At least I could trust that you mean me no harm. Ooh. I love that. And that's that's it. Um, bring our baby back uh emil uh is leading you through the tunnels underneath the hospital and um puts his hand up looks back at you and smiles because i got this um and steps forward with his foot sets off uh a tripwire mm-hmm. boom shoot across the hallway and he just smashes them <laughs> um it's my boy. and when, when he does you you hear something that sounds like it, it sounds like a uh it, it sounds like an animal screaming like a like a farm animal screaming um and I think at that that point, um, this is this is Henry's first uh, rodeo, so to speak. Uh, I think that is the thing that like he's fucking dealing with vampire kid and bloody this and that and a pile of hands. Now something screaming down here. I'm out. Throws Lewis down. Turns around oh. to run. And smacks right into a wall of man. Um, and it's Titus oh, it goose down behind you, and um, his and eyes. Bad review just go just go wide and um, then they make and, up and yeah <laughs> uh, the um the the view that you have is titus bringing his knife uh his like a, the long carving knife uh up between uh between henry's legs and just slitting him from the bowel to jowl pretty much Dude. Um, and he doesn't fall in two pieces, but um, fall in two pieces. Um, and there's like 
blood all over Titus. And he just points his, his knife at you. He says, run, piggies. What do you do? You narrate the last uh, unseen. That's what you do. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think we're back to Heath. Which of the two of Charles and Nancy Belfort can't take it any longer? Describe them murdering the other one. Are they happy at the end? Is this back to Heath? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just thinking, sorry. Okay. <clears throat> Bowel to jowl is a good prompt. <laughs> I think we see Charles. He's staring at his well, did, when, uh, there was a wall of, of trophy animal things, right? Mm -hmm. Oh. He's, he's staring at his wall of trophy animal things, which once again now have little <laughs> tags hanging from each one of them. <laughs> he once again likes to start grabbing each tag and ripping the little, because they're, they're cheap, like little paper tags on strings mm -hmm. hanging there. He's just like, rips the tags back off of him looks up at one like one of his uh, big prize bucks and just grabs one of the antlers on it and just <laughs> wrenches oh. the antler off of his mm. off of his trophy head and just like he's fuming he turns around and uh, he goes To the bedroom where we see. Uh, and we do have a, a veil on intimate yes. partner by us. Just check. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Mm. Um, cool. Thanks for that reminder. Yeah, just wanted to check out. And his wife is sleeping in bed. And he's like, you he see him approach the bed with the antler. And he's like, you see him fuming and he didn't go. You get a little, something's wrong. You think. And then he looks at his side of the, the bed where his, uh, where his teacup lays. A little, little bit of tea left in it. Not much though. And he's like, no, no, <laughs> you, you, <laughs> and kills over dead. And then uh, the thought awakens her and she wakes up and goes like... And then a nice content smile comes across her face and she pulls the coat covers back up and turns over and to go back to sleep. And, and, the, book, and the bookcase turns and the carpenter's there. <laughs> <laughs> and then Kayla's with Even better. <laughs> <laughs> Um, cool. I think we're going to go back to the hospital and then finish up with Francis. Oh, okay, cool. yeah. <laughs> Francis is just exhausted. And... <laughs> um, so I think the scene is everyone just running willy-nilly through the tunnels uh, in the hospital. <sighs> um, with uh, a, a very large man. I think the only reason that you are all not dead is because the tunnels are small and he is very large. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, especially the children are easy, uh, easily <laughs> getting through there. Um, yeah. Um, Lewis is like, fuck this shit. <laughs> <Flies> <laughs> <through the tunnel. laughs> uh, what's, your, what's your plan here in this last scene of the night, night phase? It's like getting murdered by a psycho. In the I think tunnels. that Loma scoops Azrael up, despite Azrael not wanting to really be held that much these days. Blum was just like, no, and is running with Azrael. Um, other than that, there's not much of a plan. Uh, what are you afraid might happen? 
Oh yeah, we can make a plan. We could totally make a plan. Unable to make it. (laughs) Paloma, what are you afraid might happen if you are unable to escape Titus? I mean, I'm I'm stabbed. (laughs) Um. And my baby stabbed, and the goose lives. That's the worst. Oh, I think the goose lives. It's even worse than that. Yeah, we all Um, die, and the goose lives, and the goose becomes friends with Titus. And they go on a murder rampage. Titus uh, murders you all, grinds you up into pies, and feeds them to the goose. The- <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is going to be a vitality roll. Good outcome for Escape. the goose. Uh, from Paloma. I'm not really in a situation to use mother's love, Ava. Um, you haven't Cause, failed. Because no one's really right. been harmed. Yeah. We haven't tried stuff. I didn't really. Oh, when someone, Henry. someone or something that you love is in danger, uh, the situation is desperate. You can roll with advantage on a vitality roll. So you can yes. roll with advantage. Uh, Quick question is for clarification on my mind. So we initially failed that solve roll, but then she used a mask, which bumped it up to a success. So does that mean now our solution was correct and we have your solution? It? Yeah, your solution is correct. Uh, you are in danger. However. There was a complication. Right. Right. Oh, okay. So yeah. we don't have to make. So our story is now that's... correct. We do. We do now know what she yeah. lost and was trying to regain. Okay. Yeah. So La Hortensia is trying to uh, recreate slash regain the child that was lost and probably killed and eaten by one of its brothers. Oh, um, I have an so idea of how to solve it then. Probably Titus. Yeah. Just... I mean, we're busy right now, but I wonder about. <laughs> You're very busy right now. <laughs> I I do wonder if like um, when Paloma realizes. Loma is like, oh, maybe I should let her hold Ezreal. Oh, shit. (laughs) (laughs) um, Right now, you are uh, rolling. It doesn't seem like the moment. (laughs) You're not getting eaten. You're killing him by Titus. Right now, I'm trying not to get chopped. I have thoughts about uh, this moment here when it comes to my turn. If you don't get chopped. Right now, I'm just using a mother's love to try to like get the fuck. Yeah, to not die. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right now I'm not dying, and then I think I would maybe try to like to let her hold my baby. Okay. Uh, okay, so three. Uh, three dice, top two. <laughs> Ooh. Oh. Okay. <laughs> No. Uh, I wrote a two, a two, and a one. So uh, with advantage, that's a four. Uh, And what happens is that Asriel is... Good thing you have a lot of masks. Is narrating the entire time. I just keep going down my masks. Asriel has a lot of ideas about how to get out of this. Asriel has not been out of a house before. Um, oh, but has a lot of theoretical knowledge uh, and feels that you're ignoring him. And he kind of wiggles his way out of your arms. Um, and it looks like he's got something, but you're just in too much of a state and you have to stop and go after him. And when you do, um, you pick him up uh, in your arms and there's a wet sound and Azrael just looks up into your face uh, one last time as your head rolls off and hits the floor. God damn it. We can keep going. Would you like to use a mask? Or you want yes, to I just keep running and dying <laughs> and running and dying. Um, yeah, I would like to use another mask. I'm going to narrate another flashback. All right. Uh, uh, flashback to the happiest day you shared with the person you lost. I just want to add yeah. to it at this point. Francis is staring down a goat and thinking, I am having the worst night. <laughs> I am going like to that, tell that the other the cut that all happens. about this. This is the worst the sleeping I situation ever is intolerable. Oh, hey, cut to us. Just <laughs> blow his murdered. head on a hay bale. <laughs> and um, I think I hurt my foot. <laughs> uh, so I give us your flashback. I could have injured myself. Uh, back to the happiest day that you shared with the person you lost. Okay, yeah, and I keep interpreting the person I lost as both Anna and Lucy. Yeah, yeah. Anna, who is real, Lucy, who is likely not real. Probably not. Um, 
Probably not. Who knows? We'll find out. Uh, happiest day. Lewis, who is very real. Lewis, who is a goose <laughs> and not a person. Hyper real. Real. Lewis a real goose. He's a person. There's no a person. person that that goose. He's no person got a that boy's that soul. Um, the happiest day I shared with the person I lost. Um, uh, yeah, so Anna was a or is a famous neuroscientist. I'm trying to use like stuff that we've seen in this yeah. episode. So I'm not just talking about the same moment in my life. Um, so if a goat shows up, that, that's handy for <laughs> Yeah, like goats, hunting trophies. Um, Being chased through a basement by a psycho. Chased through a basement. Uh, yeah, let's say that Anna liked to collect uh, brains. <laughs> And one of the happiest days was when we were going to pick up a very special, um, the Royal Society had come across two whale brain. Mm. And, oh, hi. Yeah, I don't even had, how many T-Rex is here? Um, Unfortunately, we're almost done. <laughs> VIP. A crazy night. <laughs> oh, yeah. Let's say the Royal Society had a blue whale brain, and Loba had secretly gotten in touch with them to get a hold of it for Anna. Um, blue, I'm imagining they're quite big. How big? They're quite big. Yeah. <laughs> blue whale brain. That's, that's part of this. I'm like, and she wanted, so blue whale brains are about 15 pounds. Uh, how big? like how big size okay they're pretty big size wise too so Large loma is trying to planet. hide it I'm trying to figure out size wise how big it is the tallest blue whale oh, the tall anyway i'll figure it out but she she's trying to make it a surprise um <laughs> And so uh, Anna had just gotten some big uh, award uh, from the medical college for making some breakthrough. And so Paloma had this big giant blue whale brain trucked all the way back from the Royal Society and has uh, this beautiful spread out on the table uh, feast, uh, but also a blue whale brain in the middle. Um, and all of their friends are there and they're just having a lovely time. Uh, and uh, one of, <laughs> uh, let's see. Ooh, yeah. Yeah, it's like the bit of a Oh, and I'm just, I'm thinking that like someone at the party like almost cuts into the blue whale brain like it's a cake. Oh. Uh, Paloma pa panics, uh, like knocks the knife out of the way, and but then is like terrified that Anna's going to be really upset with her, but then Anna just laughs. So the day is perfect. Everyone has brain cake. And everyone has a brain cake. <laughs> brain cake. It's the perfect um, gift. All right. So back in the basement, um, uh, I think the same thing happens. Um, Azriel is determined to find a way out um, and wriggles his way out of your arms. You go back to pick him up. And uh, Titus is right on top of you when you stand up. And he has the, the hungry glint <laughs> in his eye and draws his, um, I mean, it's almost a sword, right? It's one of those big carving knives mm -hmm. um, back. And there's just a, 
white blur in front of you uh, as uh, Lewis uh, comes down no! over your shoulder and honks and flaps his wings uh, right into his face and pecks at his face. Um, and he's trying to like, Titus is a mountain of a man, and this is a tiny like steam tunnel. And he's trying to like maneuver the knife and like get Lewis. Um, and uh, he's just unable to. And Lewis uh, finally finds like he's not blinded, but like he's not able to really get you for a little bit. Um, and uh, <laughs> like Lewis actually uh, turns back at you and like with a like you don't believe there is a boy's soul in this goose. Um, but he like looks back at you as like has a meaningful look in your eye and, like honk and <laughs> you just uh, <laughs> you just um, run as Lewis is um, keeping him at bay and you are able to uh, get away. I think the complication is uh, Lewis is safe, but he is back there separated from you while you get away um did Seraph have an idea because i have something to get you out safely it's a very dangerous idea yeah oh. do it. think about getting out safety yeah uh, this let me let me tell you how i want it to play out first before you'll know <laughs> the details you'll just assume that I set these details up before I tell them to you because it'll be less dramatic if I told you the details. <laughs> Me and Emil, we have a thing going on. Me and Emil. Yeah. So anyway, what 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 did you see if you're watching a television show is me going like Emil hey. is the uh, the, the uh, Limehouse lurker boy who is now who's now uh, my target. my charge yeah. yes my vampire boy. <laughs> so I'd be like, oh, hi Titus, I hear you and your family like hurting children. As a matter of fact, I hear one of your children like eating one of your own children. And your wife seems to, but judging by the series of small skeletal hands, likes hurting children <laughs> as well. So I think it's only fair that I sent one of your boys to hell and the other to Scotland Yard. <laughs> this is a great monologue. I don't know if Titus is catching it all. There's a lot of, <laughs> a lot of honking his face. Um, yeah, T Titus is not following you for the moment. <laughs> but I love the exposition. He's well, sad. there goes my plan. He's so mad. <laughs> I um, love the idea of a villain not listening to you, Grace. <laughs> like, I'll fucking, I'll, I'll get you. But Lewis is listening. Lewis is definitely listening. He's going to take the plan time. was to lure him and let Emil kill him. Oh. <laughs> um, I, I think the the Asriel plan. I was the bait. What's going to work? Um, at, since Asriel, and Asriel's like, Mother, stop. Look. And he, uh, like, almost like drags you to a stop by gripping the wall and points out another another part of the wall that has clearly been painted over. Um, and if you wish to exit by walking through the broom bristles that are painted like brick uh, from the wall and disappear from Titus's view and exit the hospital, you can do so. Would you like to do so? I mean, it doesn't seem like we really have another choice. <laughs> are, you, are you giving yeah. us a choice? Is that a choice? It, I, I, yeah, I don't I see mean, an actual but... choice here. It's like, this is what you're going to do. <laughs> because... <laughs> okay, so this is the last scene of the night phase. Otherwise, I'm not sure. I, I think otherwise you just like escapes in an arbitrary way because you have to, you, you get out now that Titus is compromised. Uh, the goose's name is Lewis, yeah. And Lewis is keeping Titus at bay while you escape. Uh, unless you have a better escape plan than Asriel. I mean, the spirit inhabiting the goose is Lewis. The goose may yeah. have a proper name that, and who's yes. his spirit is, his spirit is right. now. So the, the, cur the current, uh, the newest threat is the Ardley crone uh, and Lewis the boy from the village of Ardley uh, was messing in a witch's garden and she put his spirit into a goose uh, who was brought to Hargrave to be exercised. Lewis is causing problems. The crone turns out to be quite nice. Yeah, she's lovely. And young. Um, and yeah. 
Uh, so do, do you have another escape plan or would you like to use Ezreal's? Yeah, I think it's also good for us, me to listen to Ezreal since I was kind of patronizing him. Yeah, you will not let you forget it. I know. <laughs> Let's not forget. Um, all right. Let's. Uh, so you escape through the tunnels uh, to the sound of honking and swearing behind you. Uh, Lewis will be fine. We know as the audience. Um, and so let's cut back to the last scene. Animals never get hurt. Francis, um, probably dawn is starting to break uh, as you wake up in the goat house yeah. uh, on your hay bale and not really wake up, just kind of like pull yourself Give up and for whatever fitful the slump you had there. Yeah. Um, and I think, uh, what, uh, what the fuck's his name? Uh, I think uh, Eugene actually comes out uh, oh, no. morning with like a, a pail mm -hmm. uh, and he like looks startled for a second and then turns around and goes back in the house uh, and emerges a few minutes later with a, a plate that has oh. <laughs> uh, some, so, some bacon uh, and a, a, a few uh, biscuits on it mm. and a, a large glass of milk, a jug of milk for you. And just kind of like shakes his head a little bit and sets him down next to you. <laughs> And I think um, I think Francis is florid in his thanks at this point. Like, I, and I think this is the speech of like, I have passed the worst possible night. <laughs> <laughs> I nearly twisted an ankle, stumbling over a hole in the ground. I forgot that the moon was nearly new, more the fool me, and I came to regret that. <laughs> the, the goats that stared at me through the night were soul chilling. I, I don't know what sort of night the other hunters have had, but uh, it can't be more vexing than this. <laughs> thank you, thank you for offering the play, the the hay bale or the the goat house. Thank you so much for breakfast. You are saving a desperate man. <laughs> well, let me know you're coming next time, and I'll leave out a candle for you, and I'll tell Timothy to leave you alone. Oh, Timothy. <laughs> And I think, yeah, he's just tucking in on the food. And at least, <laughs> at least, at least he gets bacon at the end of the <laughs> um, I think as, as the sun rises, the camera kind of pans back on you, uh, chowing away at breakfast um, <laughs> and kind of like side like back into the window where the boy, Lewis, is like sweating and in a coma and just feverish in his bed. Uh, that's it. Um, that is our night phase. <laughs> um, oh, ooh, yeah, I think I think that counts as your um, blowback mm -hmm. Paloma getting getting Harley's boy killed. Mm -hmm. um, oh, I'm sorry. It's Harley. a dawn. It's a There's dawn. There's not very many grave diggers left for me. <laughs> <laughs> just, we just keep going. You keep, you keep killing grave diggers. <laughs> I'll kill them. They just. Oh, Har Harley. Harley quit after the child was born, but he sent his son, Henry, who got murdered by Titus. So Harley is still alive to be mad at Paloma. Still um, Gerald, right? The awful one? Oh yeah, Gerald's still alive. Yeah, he's still working Gerald, for the other doctor. Who's, who speaks really vaguely. <laughs> speaks like a, like a bumper sticker. Isn't he? Oh, Lloyd is, it, is, is it, dead. Yeah, Harold, the, the other one, uh, Gerald's the one that's working for Dr. Blackwell, who's yeah, still successful. Bringing back the body of the ghost, uh, the, the body that you created for the ghost from St. James' house that doesn't have a spirit oh, yeah. in it anymore. So it can't oh. be brought back to life. Yeah. Ooh, boy. <laughs> um, let's answer some Don questions. Everyone answered a question. So that's a check. Okay. Do um, I still get a credit for that? Even though I wasn't in on the. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Did the hunter you set us up for it? Yeah. Yeah. I think everyone got their echoes. So that's good. I'm not sure if Francis did. Oh, yeah, maybe not. Oh, because we saw the... Yeah, I was yeah. in Sorry. I well, should've... you 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 spent the night with farm animals, and there was a lot of uh, animals in the... Oh, yeah, that's true. <laughs> you had a goat stare at you, and you talked to a goat. <laughs> <laughs> Instead of you yelling at a water buffalo, the goat yelled at you. <laughs> <laughs> did you teach the goose a lesson about what it means to be a goose? Um, Paloma, did you teach the child a lesson about what it means to be human? Uh, I was I was wor I was trying to get that one in in the last bit. Um, I think in a way, but not like I don't think the child learned a lesson. I think 
Paloma mm. taught the child what it means to be overprotective. Cool. What it needs to be fearful, but I don't I don't need any experience for I'm okay. Um I did, did touch the guts. In a pile of guts. Uh, guts. Francis, you did you did not appear in London Society wearing risque or avant-garde fashion. Uh, did you secretly show, show a vulnerable side to someone? I don't really think I did. I think he was sort of on the whole time. Mm. If that makes sense. Um, not even in the and, morning. And Sarah uh, did not make love to a human <laughs> in order to forget the darkness. Sarah is having a dry spell. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like, oh, just like just like me for real. It's too, ooh, it's too close. Get yourself get a goose. Aesthetic distance from your, so <laughs> from your character. There. My life and my art are becoming too similar. So Just when get a I goose get and you'll be all set. <clears throat> when I get five things, I get a toy. Yeah, we'll get you a toy and ask one of the other hunters what it is. Yeah, what um, I get. What'd you get? What'd you get? Oh, well, you were it's maybe something we found in the alleyway or yeah. The way you're a tiny skeletal toy? hand. Yeah, I'm, is... I'm house I'm house ruling that after all of your advancements are checked, if you fill up XP again, you can take a personal oh. course item. Yeah. I don't really I need, mean, I mean, I can dig up items too, but I don't know. Oh yeah. Hey, keep... You can never have too many items. You will be getting another item. Uh, I mean, I like Peter's skeletal hand. It seems very Paloma-like. She'd be Ooh. like, oh, I could use that. <laughs> yeah, I think take the best Paloma one. put one in her pocket. <laughs> Take a hand, leave my hand. Give, give that lady a hand. Yay. Hey. Ah, pretty soon I'll have enough to make a skeleton child. <laughs> <laughs> um, and you also uh -oh. get um, a valuable um, from your resurrectionist move. Oh, yeah, we dug up something. Um, probably something off of um, Henry's body, maybe. I know, oh, I like, no. probably. Probably, he's the one that was uh, supposed to bring it to you. <laughs> yeah, so he's probably got something in his pocket for me. Um, Ooh, Nick, can I uh, give you uh, Harley's uh, pocket watch? Yeah, I was thinking it might be, yeah, Harley's pocket watch. That'll come in handy. Love it. Harley will <sighs> never find that. I feel so bad about um, all the killing things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and so I Francis think that is so it. Yeah, Francis <laughs> is messed up. <laughs> Haunted by goats. Ooh, everyone's got two conditions. Fancy. Oh, yeah. I'm so we, jealous. We, That's we, why we I have, awful. So now everyone has a child. Paloma has the child. Uh, Francis is taking care of Lewis. Sarah yeah. is, has the vampire child ward. Um, yeah. Former um, Limehouse um, Lurker. No, no, yeah, my vampire for, child. Former Limehouse Lurker. And uh, even even Victoria might get a child. Who knows? <laughs> um, yeah. So uh, we'll figure out how to do morning if you're still in the village, um, which mm -hmm. you may be. But I think what? Uh, we could just all move out there. <laughs> you could all just move out there. Might be for the best. <laughs> oh, um, yeah. Or the next night phase is dinner with uh, Theodora. So, oh, and oh we gosh. can compare notes about parenting. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> Paloma's mostly convinced that this goose doesn't have a, ch a child inside it, except for now she's been saved by this goose. It's just a very intelligent goose. Ah, I yeah, don't know. Goose you... is... Your kids have done you pretty good. You're you got a little vampire know, tracker. Track they, kid we and should goose motherfucker. We should and... maybe. I think we should retire and let the kids <laughs> do this because we're doing it better. <laughs> the new Hargrave house is the orphan, a goose, and the limehouse lurker. I love it. Hargrave babies. Hargrave babies. What was the thing that Peter said at the beginning? The That's young... what Peter just said. Hmm? Little Hargrave achievers. Oh, Little yeah. Hargrave. Um, cool. So that's it for game, I think. Uh, let's do a quick round of stars and wishes. And let's start with Heath up top. It's hard. I, like, I, I have a Wishes are always about perspective. Because, <laughs> like, on one hand, like, I rolled two 12s, but somehow they seem to be on things that, like, were sort of inconsequential. 
Mm. But like overall, overall, I find myself leaving this episode very unsatisfied. Like everything felt very arbitrarily difficult and against us today. Like mm. lots of disadvantages, like, especially like the way it ended was like, I've got this grand plan. Vampire boy's going to kill Titus. Like, no, you can't do that. Uh, yeah, he's, uh, he's already never, occupied. <laughs> never mind. So that was like really just like a, like felt like a Charlie Brown soccer ball um, or football mm. moment of like, no, you can't do that. Oh, I had this whole, uh, okay. We'll just leave. So yeah, I just found myself leaving very unsatisfied tonight. <laughs> but in the, I I liked it was f that uh, no, I don't like that Paloma had to put on a bunch of masks. But it was fun getting to learn more about her past because of those masks. Those were, that was cool. Hmm. Which is you know one of the cool things about the masks. Yeah, it's the only way we could learn about past of our characters. Yeah. <laughs> Literally the only way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that was cool, seeing where that panned out. And it actually seems like that timed out really well, too, since, you know, you just sort of had that revelation that, like, maybe Lucy never existed. So it's kind yeah. of interesting, cause, like, if you'd taken those masks earlier on in the campaign, you might have established a very different storyline. So yeah. it's kind of cool that it seems like those came at the right time. Cool. Um, Peter. Uh, let's see. Star for Keith and I holding together health wise post vaccine booster. <laughs> yeah. Uh, also, one hundred percent momently. Star for like I'm, I'm digging how the one two split works out. Like it's mm -hmm. fun to to have two radically different stories to keep flipping between. Or at least that that was a joy for me of just like oh, and now we're watching Francis hang out with friends in in the town that he visits. Um, let's see. Da, da, da. I. I do feel like in the future, what do I want in the future for the, what are the wishes? Um, I still at some point need to put on a mask to, to figure out what the mm -hmm. hell is going on. I'm, I'm really intimidated by the story corner I've kind of painted myself into mm -hmm. would be, would be Francis Quinn of Mars. <laughs> <laughs> My background. Um, wishes apart from that. Um, I, I am interested to see, like, if, if, as I, I suspect that we'll find a solution where Lewis did something really bad and deserved what was coming to him. And I'm interested <laughs> to see how Francis responds to that. Mm. Um, that's going to be a fun character beat to sort of play to see if something kind of punches through the golden retriever, like only the yeah. current five seconds exists. <laughs> um haze that francis seems to live in um i think that's everything that comes to mind for me um yeah like my storyline was fairly low-key but today was insane and i'm yeah. i'm cool with just kind of floating along through floating along through some pleasant conversation scenes was was just what what everything ordered for me today nice. um yeah i think that's everything i got to report cool uh and nick yeah, I um I liked this one. I at first I was like, I haven't got to roll yet. But then I rolled twice and it was bad. So maybe <laughs> it's good that I but it kind of made sense that it, it like story-wise it made sense that it was they were bad rolls. Um sorry, I used fun. up all the good rolls. It's okay. <laughs> you used them really well. I liked doing masks. <laughs> I, for the same reason that Keith was saying that, like, it feels like that I, it feels like a good time to learn more about Paloma's past now that Paloma has mm -hmm. a child. I think the wish I have for myself is to put the tent poles farther apart because I had just done a mask right before. I was like, I, I kind of talk about different, I want to talk about different moments and paint mm -hmm. different parts of the picture. So um, I liked using the, the unseen is a uh, suggestion there, but maybe I might even ask for suggestions in the future. Uh, so that's, that's a wish for myself is to vary the path a bit. Um, otherwise, I think it was delightful and I loved, yeah, I loved going back and forth. And yeah, the total. The, yeah, <laughs> I don't, yeah, the only wish I have is like, I would like to kind of, 
pass a little bit more and I didn't let myself be driven as much by I forgot that I was jealous for mm. most of it and that would have been fun to help drive and then I think letting the check boxes drive me too would be fun even though yeah so that's just something to keep in mind for next time that's okay, me cool um stars uh I, I had a lot of fun there's a lot of really fun moments in the game um i had no idea what you all even wanted to do for night phase so i had no idea what was going to happen which is always a great time um i i i've been looking at la hortensia for like months and just being like what is her deal i don't know anything <laughs> um and th there's a bit in the in the threat it's like she doesn't usually fight she usually she like leads people into traps and stuff i was like oh i could do that that's great <laughs> um and then we kept I think following was, her uh i think it was heath that gave me the great opening to because like you have to be like where's your where's your lair I'm like i don't fucking know <laughs> um but then the the clue with the 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 clothes i was like oh he didn't escape the hospital. He's hiding in the basement of the hospital um, with her. So like, oh, that's so like those those uh, those clues from the uh, echo in the night or whatever it is. Um, the what's it called? The uh, beacon in the dark. Um, the beacon in the dark move is like su is like super good for me to like concretize some of the things that I just don't know about. Um, I really, I, I get the, I have, I have the threat, uh, like 80% written and the 20% that's not written are the locations. So, uh, and the people. Oh. So th there's, there's a couple of them I have, uh, names and little bits for, but, uh, this was a great opportunity to make that up so I could write it down so other people can use it. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, and, uh, yeah, I, I I like the big the the contrast between like the sort of friendly pastoral scene and the like the psycho murder in the basement chase, uh, and the Dying creepy lady in the hallway, and, like people dying and getting cut up and putting on masks and getting cut up again. Um, this the, the the between is like so like kind of like moody and creepy most of the time, and then when you do have those action scenes, it's like really really satisfying. Um, yeah, uh, which is uh, I I I have I have a hit for Francis's juice, uh, and I'm excited to kind of see it come mm -hmm. out. Um, so that's gonna be fun. Um, I really I really want y'all to catch La Hortensia. I wish we had more. I the I'm, I'm like I I feel bad that the the unseen or the uh, the night phase like gets cut off like in the middle of it sometimes but like that's also the strength of that mechanic i think mm -hmm. like we can't just like live in the nighttime all the time like we have to be like okay we're getting chased out and maybe uh, oh, oh no the bad guy's still there and we're gonna have to deal with him later mm -hmm. um that's so really it's a really interesting balance of like uh, um i'm still kind of trying to figure out how i feel about it but it works so i'm gonna keep doing it um and uh yeah, I had, I had something else too. Um, I'm curious to see how the children are going to get along and like <laughs> how they're going to fit into because I it's it's tempting to like just use them as tools. Um, like oh, we have the smart one and the strong one and the goose. <laughs> um, <laughs> and I really I'm really like enjoying finding ways to make them people. Um, and how they bounce off of everyone. So looking forward to that. Um, yeah, and I also wish to finish the threat so I don't have to make up as, as much stuff on the fly. Um, and I will, and that threat will be published uh, after we're done with it here. Um, so finish. Uh, oh, and I'm really looking forward to uh, the lead up to the dinner party with uh, oh, no. with Braithwaite next night. So and the goose. Yeah, I have a ooh. I have a lot of things in the chamber for that, but we'll see what comes up. Like, who knows? Um, Good, I'm going to have sex with somebody. 
<laughs> yeah. Also, wish fucking Sarah gets laid. Oh my yeah. god. Yeah. Okay, that's our sole focus. Our sole Only focus for the next tomorrow. episode. I'm going to change my dawn question to arrange an over the top erotic experience for someone else. Yeah, I think I'm going to do the romantic one for me, but make it about Sarah. <laughs> Trying to get yeah. Sarah. And we somehow managed. we end up arranging a romantic evening for for Lewis. <laughs> I've, still never, I've still never used my custom move of have sex with someone and swap bodies. Do oh, not fuck the goose. Do not fuck the goose. Don't, don't, don't do it. You're not allowed. No, no, no. That's we have a pets. line on goose fucking. Yeah. <laughs> um, cool. I think that is it then. So, oh, I just uh, I did want to add thank yeah, you for, for letting Francis just go straight to the crone and talk. Yeah. Yeah. Again, that's, that that's the first thing. And the same thing with like instead of like making you find the entrance to the hospital and like get down there, it's like, we're just gonna have you there. Um yeah. I think there's a lot of that's why I really enjoy this kind of game because I don't know, I've been I've been embroiled in some watching some discussions about like more traditional games and stuff and playing over the last couple of weeks. Um and like just the the drudgery of like okay i go 10 feet and do this okay i talk to this person make 12 rolls and then get another so you're like no you're at the place with the danger let's do that mm -hmm. um like skip out all the boring part uh which i really appreciate about this game and this group it's a lot of fun to do Ooh. yeah and our audience and i'm gonna I, I i think i have the ability to make people vips in chat now but i don't know how so I'm going to. <gasps> yes make people vips we have a vip among us i just need to figure out how twitch works mm -hmm. yeah okay um, we're just gonna get sarah laid next time yeah get sarah laid no yeah. other things need to happen <laughs> be sure to talk yeah, that up in the high post i need friends this enthusiastic <laughs> in real life <laughs> <laughs> step one sarah step two heath yeah, echo in, <laughs> echo in the night for your real life. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm going to stop the stream. Okay. Thank you for everyone hanging out, uh, well, especially our VIP, Amanda. Uh, we'll see you all next time with our day phase. Everybody's Bye. a VIP.